Good evening and welcome to the Select Board Board of Health meeting for the Town of Deerfield, June 5th, 2019 uh, at, at 6 o'clock at the Deerfield Municipal Offices and uh, Main Meeting Room, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield. Um, we always like to start the meeting with a Pledge of Allegiance, so if you would stand, that'd be wonderful. For those that are walking in. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all very much, and um, uh, the meeting will be recorded, so, um, and if you, come, if you come up to speak tonight, or if you plan to speak, please come up to a mic and state your name and where you're from. So, um, thank you. So, uh, first off, we have to approve uh, a whole bunch of minutes <laughs> we've been working on for a okay. while, and you had some changes, right? You were yes. To I'm, I'm, um, well, how about we take them one at a time? Yeah, why don't we? So, um, August 16th, 2018, um, that is okay. I make okay. a motion to accept. Uh, second. Any uh, further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I abstain. Abstain. Okay. Um, August 21st, 2018, um, uh, I make a motion to approve. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Two. Yep, out of all these. Yep. Um, uh, January 16th, 2019. January oh. 23rd. I have January 16th and January 23rd. Oh, here it is. Yep, it's down at the bottom. Sorry. Okay. Yep. So, 2019, January. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, we, I'm sorry. We put those down separately because you, those were new this Newer. week. Yep. Right. You had seen okay. the ones so, before. Yep. That's okay. Um, okay. Make a motion to approve. Motion to approve. So second. Yeah. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. So that's two zero. January um, 23rd. Um, on the back on the town administrator's report, it um, the town the Franklin Conservation District received a forty-two thousand dollar grant to include um, looking at Stillwater Bridge area to solve issues around the usage. Mm -hmm. Funds will be used for a facilitator. It's not um, the town was awarded. It was the Franklin Conservation District gotcha, received. Gotcha. And it was to include looking at the still water area. So if we could change that. So your motion is to change the minutes and I'll second that. All those, oh. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. That's, zero on that. That's on the 19th, to I mean on the 23rd. So that one needs to be adjusted. Okay. Um, February 6th, the only adjustment, it should have been Tolly, Stark, T-O-L-L-Y. On February 6th, so Yeah, uh, February 6th right here. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, other That's than that, that was okay? Okay, so that, um, take make a, a motion make to a motion. approve. I'll second that. All those in favor? Um, Aye. Um, February 20th was okay. So, we have a motion on the 20th. I'll yep. second that motion. Um, all those in, oh, all those, those in favor. <laughs> Aye. Okay. Um, um, March 13th, the second page was, uh, I have no second page and, um, I just wanted to add me as, uh, the board of selectmen rep to the capital improvement. And then we needed a second page. This is the third page. So there was no second page so i don't know if we want to hold that yeah let's hold that one that's march 13th yep um march 20th mm -hmm. um the budget timing um i just had a question it should be four six nineteen not Instead three, three six, yeah 19. because this was already the march right. 20th yep so um other than that it was okay. Okay. So, so I'll make a motion for March 20th. Put those changes with and I'll change. second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, March 27th, 2019 was okay. So I'll make a motion to approve that. Okay. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, April 3rd. Um, there's a little typo here. They do follow mm -hmm. 
MDAR, not the right. default. Um, and then I just crossed out that there was MDAR. MDAR. There's no one from on site from MDAR. Okay. That's the Massachusetts Department of Agricultural Resources. Right. They, they but they use site. their standards. Yep. And then um, this is for the RFQ for the building survey. Uh, this says this was going to be sent out. Okay. Uh, so we just changed that. Um, that is continuing to be reviewed or something. Okay. So with those changes, I approve. A motion on those. Yeah. And I'll. Um, I'll second that motion with the changes. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That's April 3rd. That's April 3rd, um, yep. Oh, wait. This was part of April 3rd, too. This, um, the Rivers and Streams training was being held at the Deerfield Town Hall, sponsored by the Franklin Conservation District, and that was actually today. Okay, so. That was, they had said it was the FERCOG. It's the Franklin Conservation District. So, so we'll so vote that again, so a, a, a a motion. Uh, motion to um, ex, uh, revise that last yes. page. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Three, uh, two, zero. And then you had April 17th. I make a motion to approve those. Those, were those okay. are all set. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll second that. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Whoops. Um, I think May 5th. Yeah. This is okay. Um, May 1st. May 1st. May 1st. Um, this is the complete streets. Mm -hmm. It says other D DEP um, scoring. It shouldn't be DEP, wasn't it DOT? Mm -hmm. DOT, so we changed that. Okay. Yeah, so it just needs to be changed from DEP to, to DOT. DOT. Um, and um, the opening for the Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy Committee, there are, is, um, there's two openings, and I'm not going, I don't want to continue okay. on. I've already done two term, two five-year terms. So there's another five-year term open. Okay. Um, we have a motion with those changes. Um, yeah, I'll make that motion. I'll second that motion. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And. And we have May 5th. Yeah. I think is um, the last. No, May 8th. Um, oh yes, May 8th, mm -hmm. sorry. That was May right. 8th was um, RFQ assessment was sent out. Um, that's not true. We are still working on it. So I just okay. wanted to cross. cross that out. Yeah. All right. And you've got all these we can get. Yeah, I, I'm to gonna give her. this to her right okay, now. Okay, perfect. So you have a motion on that? May eighth, I make a motion to approve with the amendment. And uh second that motion. All those in favor? No. Aye. Aye. Then May fifteenth, I'll make a motion to approve that. That was fine. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three, okay, so we can hand this. Great. Um, oh, that was a pile. Yeah, sorry. That's fine. No, those are all great. Changes. Thank you so much. Perfect. Thank you. Well, we can start this hearing a bit early, I think, right? Or do we want to move down the um, any of that? We do have, but we did post it as a hearing. So do you want to? Well, no, it's, we just, we put a. to go? Yeah, okay, I mean, it, it's, it's not a, it's not a, it's it's not a it's hearing not a, that we've published. Hearing. It's just Perfect. our scheduled time. Well, wonderful. We'll move forward then and get Paul out of here <laughs> earlier tonight. Um, so our first uh, presentation tonight is um, uh, about the town possibly looking into purchasing LED street lights. Um, Paul Vessel, um, Director of Business Development, uh, Northeast USA, Real Term Global, is here to kind of give us an update. He provide. I, I met Paul at the um, MMA conference in January, I guess January, and we. we talked a bit about you know what, what the town could uh, benefit from. Um, I know he's been working with other towns and we've been talking over the last five months or so, six months about um, what we could do and he's provided a couple of, um, a couple of options at first, just reiterations of them. Um, and it was really just because we needed to provide him with kind of our inventory of what we had. So that took a, a little while, but um, he's here today to present what he found. So thank you, welcome. Thank you, Trevor. So we've been working uh, in uh, helping municipalities throughout Massachusetts uh, convert their street lights to LED for a number of years. Um, uh, closest to home, we've done uh, uh, Sunderland, Williamsburg, um, Pittsfield. Um, we're currently uh, working with Longmeadow, uh, Agawam, West Springfield, East Longmeadow here in the western part of the state, and we've yep. done quite a few projects in the eastern part of the state. 
It, it's fairly compelling, um, the reasons why municipalities, not only in Massachusetts, but throughout the Northeast, um, have either converted their streetlights or, or are looking at converting their streetlights. Essentially, you've got three sort of overarching benefits. Uh, one, you'll save a tremendous amount of energy. Mm -hmm. so you take a lot of um, uh, carbon uh, off the table. You'll save a tremendous amount of money. That could be first or second, depends right. on it. <laughs> and, um, and then qualitatively, this is something a lot of people um, don't realize when they, when they take a look at the possibility of converting your streetlights you'll have much, uh, much more optimum and higher quality and safer lighting when you move from your existing old lighting technology, which is mm -hmm. essentially high pressure sodium, to LED, which is a much more uh, accurate, exacting, and um, uh, optimum way of distributing light. That's great. The other part of the equation, um, and this was um, legislated in Massachusetts quite a few years ago, and throughout most of the Northeast, allowing municipalities to take ownership of, of your streetlight assets currently in the hands of, of, uh, of your utility. So your savings comes on, on two fronts. Uh, when you uh, take ownership of the streetlights, your rate classification changes to your advantage from S1 to S2. Okay. So you save a lot of money just by not having to pay those what we consider fairly exorbitant leasing fees to the utility. And then on top of that, uh, you have significant energy savings, uh, which also translates into, into dollar savings. So based on the inventory that, uh, that you uh, provided us, we did some, some calculations. We call it a desktop analysis. But it gives you a pretty accurate idea on what you can expect the savings to look like for your project. So roughly, mm -hmm. today as we speak, uh, Deerfield is spending a, about $32,000 a year for, for your streetlights. Yeah. Once you take ownership of the streetlights and then convert them to the more energy efficient uh, LEDs, that number goes down to 11000 So savings of wow. 20000 a year or about 65%. We broke down how that saving was, was calculated based on your tariff structure. <clears throat> so your distribution charges today, what you pay uh, is $20,000. That goes down to $1,000. That's, that's, that's your biggest, biggest savings. Your supply charges goes down from $7,000 to $2,000. Delivery charges reduction of 70% also. So that, that's, that's sort of what the numbers look like. Mm -hmm. um, let me explain to you what a project of this type means for Deerfield. Sort of what, what are our approaches to managing these streetlight projects. And whether you work with us or, or anybody else, our strong advice is follow these steps to do it properly. You don't want to skip it, any of these steps. We've done uh, upwards of 250 municipal conversions, 95% of them in the Northeast. So we've learned a few things over, sure. over the years, uh, sort of what to pay attention to and, uh, and how to go about doing it. So everything's spelled out in the, uh, in the document that I yes. provided you, but I'll, 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 I'll walk through it, you know, um, give you a sort of overview. And then I'll just mention, I'll make that document available for, for the public to, to look at after, too, so we can run some copies if anyone needs. Actually, we could just put it on the website, probably. We can do that, too. Yeah. Yep, but I'll, I'll have a couple copies that people can look at. Okay. So the, fir the first step um, is to establish the proper, um, accurate foundation uh, of data, and that, uh, and that entails what we call a GIS audit. So we worked with the inventory which you provided us, yep. um, and I must say, in every project we've done, it's never accurate. It's never accurate. <laughs> shockingly, right? <laughs> there, for, and for you know, some of the reasons are somewhat justified. Street lights often are are, um, are fixed uh, in a storm, and yeah. sometimes records aren't up up to date. Yeah. Whatever reason, uh, it's important to establish a correct uh, foundation baseline. And especially since you're going to buy these assets, you want to know exactly what you're buying and make, sh make sure you're getting what you buy. Right. 
in addition, though, t to that, um, what's also important uh, when we go through the field audit, and we'll, we'll physically audit each particular uh, pole, streetlight, and we're gathering uh, a host of different um, data, which is going to be important to get the lighting right. So included in those data points are the, um, the exact location of the pole, the condition of the pole, the type of fixture, the uh, distance from the curb, um, the width of the street, um, the pedestrian conflict uh, at the location, uh, the length of the mast arm. Yeah. All of those uh, pieces of information uh, will then be updated and will be transferred over to you. You'll own what will now be an accurate and complete management asset database for these new assets that you're going to take ownership of, so that's good. It'll help you um, as time goes by, if anything needs to be done either with the lights or the poles, uh, it'll help who's ever going up to those poles no to be able to work uh, uh, quickly and accurately. All that data is also very important to get the photometrics right for your lighting. I mentioned before that you and every other municipality prior to the advent of LED technology was working with relatively low-tech lighting, lighting technology. Uh, High-pressure high sodium, mercury vapor before that, incandescent. Mm -hmm. what, the, what LED has enabled now uh, the lighting industry to be able to do, because each one of the LED fixtures is composed of individual light-emitting diodes, you can now direct that light exactly where you need it. Mm -hmm. So what it translates into is more efficient lighting, a lot less light loss. Your lights today, you're losing a tremendous amount of, of lighting up in, up in the atmosphere, which people don't like. They want their skies dark. You're losing it on the ground. You're losing it behind the fixture. That, and um, That was a major thing that I, you know, I had asked out to the group what, you know, what questions you may have, please come. And a lot of the questions uh, geared around, you know, directing the light and not, you know, putting it where it needs to be and not everywhere else. So I'm yeah. anxious, to, I'm glad to hear that that's, that's a big focus of it, or a, a benefit. And actually today, um, you know, I had another request for um, additional light. So if you give us the baseline, would we have then have the opportunity to, um, See if there was another light, other light mm. opportunities in town that should be lit. I mean, are you assessing that as so, well? No, very good question and, and, and a very common question that comes up. So the, uh, the objective of the photometric lighting design is to optimize the lighting with the assets that you have. Right. right? Okay. However, when we go through that exercise, if we see... Um, really grievous l lack of lighting, let's say at an intersection or on yeah. a busy street, we of course will identify that and then we'll go over what, what, what some of the right. options are to rectify that. Great, right. that's wonderful. There's no, there's no mandated um, uh, photometric design model in North America, um, but the IES, which is the governing body for roadway lighting in, in, in North America, puts out guidelines, which they call RP8. They update it every few years. And uh, what RP8 um, guides photometric designers like ourselves, based on all these different characteristics and, uh, and data that we're, that we're collecting, you have targets. Um, and those targets differ depending on the type of street, uh, depending on the distance of the poles and, and everything else. They use an acronym called BUG, which stands for backlighting, uplighting, and glare. So we look to minimize backlighting, uplighting, and glare, eliminate yeah. it if we can. Yeah. And then there's luminance and illuminance, which are the other two um, targets uh, within the photometric lighting design. So what objects look like on the ground and what objects look like from the human eye, particularly important for drivers yeah. uh, and pedestrians. So what the modeling allows us to do, uh, or anybody, if you do it correctly, is, is to give you 
uh, really safer lighting. So a motorist, as they're moving from pole to pole, we're looking at eliminating or reducing significantly dark spots. Um, we're looking at giving you the proper lighting f footprint. Uh, today, you've got lighting, but it it's not necessarily the optimum mm -hmm. lighting footprint for that location. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, efficiency. We're right. looking to give you the proper lumens on the ground that you need for that particular street. So we'll move through Deerfield, um, and we do a unique street-by-street -street photometric design. Uh, what does that mean? It doesn't mean we're necessarily uh, doing a different design for every street, but for every unique street. So I would imagine here, like everywhere else, if you've got streets which are largely the same or maybe identical in terms of the pole, pole uh, composition and spacing, we'll have a, a design typical for that type of street and we'll uh, extrapolate from there. As soon as we get to a street which is, which is significantly different from any of the photometric lighting designs that, that we had done previously, that calls for a new photometric lighting design. So in the end, you're getting customized photometric design for the different street types that you have uh, in Deerfield. Great. Great. Um, almost every municipality that engages our services engages on a complete turnkey basis, meaning municipalities even as large as Brockton, which we've mm -hmm. done, or um, uh, even much larger than that. We, we work for San Diego Gas and Electric that has uh, 50,000 uh, luminaires. Wow. Most entities don't have lighting experts on board. Of course. And so they're looking for us to really manage the project. Now, one misconception that a lot of municipalities have is once they engage our services, you're, you're just kind of washing your hands and you have nothing to do with the project. Mm -hmm. We want your involvement at certain inflection points of the project. So the first inflection point is once we gather all the data, we'll sit down with you before you finalize your buyback uh, from Eversource to make sure that that data is correct. Right. Sometimes there are outlying lights which might be on the border of Deerfield and we're, it, we're, you know, we're not sure when we're collecting it who that, who that light pertains to. So we'll get that sorted out with you first. Sure. Similarly, uh, before we go into the modeling on the photometric design, we don't want to do that design in a vacuum. So we want your feedback, your local feedback. Hey, you know, we have a school over here and so when you're doing your design, maybe you want to err on that being a little bit brighter than your models tell you. Right. Well, we have this intersection here, which maybe is a little problematic. Pay attention to that when you go through your design. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll gather your local feedback uh, before we uh, go into the design. And at every step of the way, you'll, you'll, ha you'll have veto power over everything we do. So we'll explain to you why we did what we did, yep. and we'll show you what the models look like. But you may say to us, you know what, we, that's very intelligent and everything, but we, we don't quite like that, and yeah. let's make this change. We will competitive, competitively bid out the two major um, cost components of your project, which are the fixtures and the local subcontractors that will manage um, to do the install. Now, those have to be state approved? <laughs> or so, if you're referring to FAC 100, um, and some municipalities uh, procure on the basis of FAC 100, we are sourcing from the same tier one luminaire manufacturers that are in FAC 100. I'm talking about subcontractors, the contractors. The contractor part, the install part. No, so, well, I'm just referring because we had a, the best way to put it, a cluster at the elementary school on the roof. Hmm. because of the state-mandated contractors where, you know, we want to have some input into that. You will have inputs, and, and, and so the answer is no. We don't have to, we don't have to source from state-mandated contractors. We, we will only consider or suggest that you only consider qualified contractors. Mm -hmm. So if you have a local contractor that you would like to be part of the bidding process, you let us know. Um, we're going to do a very objective evaluation on the contractors, which is not only going to be based on price. Um, it should be based on price and experience. 
performance. Um, mm -hmm. We want to make sure they have the proper resources, they have the proper certifications, they have the bucket trucks, they have the proper um, safety record. And we'll evaluate that and we'll make our recommendation to you and you'll have final say over that. Uh, likewise on the fixtures, we're completely agnostic when it comes to technology. Um, we've done, because we've done such a large volume of projects, we've worked with every major, what we call tier one luminaire manufacturer in the United States. Most of the municipalities prefer U.S. manufacturers, so these are the ones we work with. We call them the big six. If you're familiar with ro roadway lighting, you'll know the names. Cree, Acuity, Eaton Cooper, GE, Philips, and Leo Tech. Among those six, they do 99% of the roadway lighting in the, in the U.S. Okay. Now, with the lighting fixtures, because of our historic districts and what we want to do with the center of town, mm -hmm. can you gear those, that lighting to that? Because so, we're not going to want some areas to have the poles the with the lights coming down. Yeah. Absolutely. So what yeah. we call um, generically decorative lighting, um, mm -hmm. That's the most important in terms of the look and feel of the lighting. So we have folks who, who do nothing but uh, decorative, aesthetic, photometric design. So we won't only be looking at the, light, at, the, at the light on the ground, but we'll be looking at the look and feel of the fixture. Um, typically, when it comes to decorative fixtures, we'll want to show you a, 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 at least two or three different options. Mm -hmm. Again, because aesthetics are really important when, it, are. when, it, when it comes to that. And in all cases, we'll, we'll try to, you know, keep as, as, as much as possible, based on what's out there in the market, keep that exact look and feel. Because, you know, one of the other projects that, well, Kevin can speak to it better than I can, that we're looking at is our business district and basically taking all the poles out. Uh -huh. uh, you know, part of it's fire safety. Uh, the other is just the aesthetics of the center of our town. Sure. So, you know, there's that big project that would be going on. Now, you know, that would be something we'd have to look at in consideration. You know, yeah, we're not that close to it, uh, doing it, because, you know, obviously we have to work with Eversource on that. Right. But, you know, it, uh, you know, since we've got a ladder truck in town, can't really use it in the center of town very well because you're going to hit a wire. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. A lot of wires. So... And then also, I guess, you know, obviously a decorative pole, I mean, I know this is kind of an estimate of what things are. Decorative poles obviously are more expensive than a gooseneck off a telephone pole kind of thing. So they are. They we'd are. have to kind so, of. So that's why this is an estimate. Yeah, we of course. We, we won't know until we, until we do the, um, uh, the, the field survey mm -hmm. um, exactly what, you know, what your fixtures look like and what the replacement fixtures are going to look like. Right. Good. And, you know, the other thing is that about four or five years ago, there was an energy conservation project, and they took out a number of street lights. Mm -hmm. uh, some of those we're probably going to want to put back in. Mm -hmm. There's been requests for several people. Because, I think actually some nodding heads that, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, we were uh, trying to save, obviously, money. Probably. Some of it is, you know, a lot of people walk on Chicago Street and North Main Street, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of dark areas on both those streets. That's exa and, um, exactly know, the sort of thing we'll want to go over with you before we send our, uh, our field, field order. Input. And I know I looked into it before, and I don't know if I haven't had a chance to go through all the details on this, but we had uh, one of the companies that we were talking with at the MMA years ago was that they could put motion sensors into some of these where they uh, cut down to half, and then when they get motion, they'll go to full. So there are, there, there's, there, there's lots of technology uh, that's available to layer onto streetlights. Mm -hmm. um, there are motion sensors. The most common layer of technology, which is becoming more and more common now, is, are smart controls. So uh, what smart controls allow you to do is to remotely uh, dim and trim your, your lights by, by altering the voltage, usually in increments of 10%. Um, why do people want to do that or want, why do they want to have the ability to do that? This is brand new. Up until about a month ago or two months ago, 
you could dim your lights, you could lower your lights, but you, you would save energy, but you wouldn't save any money. Both Eversource and National Grid, I think within the last 30 or 60 days, have now come out with uh, metered uh, tariffs. Hmm. So if you dim down from 100% to, to 60%, you'll save 40% off, off of your bill. Wow. Wasn't the case uh, 30 or 60 days ago. So that's great that's news for yeah. people who are looking at smart controls. Wow. The other advantage of smart controls is from a maintenance standpoint, um, you can be proactive rather than reactive because you'll, you'll have a signal and know uh, if a particular street light is out rather than have to visibly um, confirm that. Mm -hmm. Not a big deal with LED lights because their failure rates are very low, but it's a, a nice to have. Mm -hmm. um, it is. We found the biggest benefit and I don't know how important it is in Deerfield. I, I live in Florence. Oh, sure, yeah. And Northampton is a very high-touch community. So when, when, they, when, nice they, when they inconverted their street lights, there were a lot of people, Florence, so. there were a lot of people that, that wanted to, to opine on, on what that looked like. Mm -hmm. right? And so with smart controls, if uh, Mr. Green, you know, has a, a, a light in front of his house, and he says, you know what, this is a little bit too bright for, 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 for our liking. Could you dim it down a little bit? With a smart control from your smartphone or from your, from your iP iP iPad, you can just dim it down. No problem. Oh, man, Kevin is going to hate that. <laughs> He's already thinking, when's my last day? <laughs> Again, it give you something to do in your spare time. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, but oddly enough, um, municipalities where um, they anticipate, you know, constituents or residents wanting to, you know, weigh in on this or, or, or make changes, they like the, to have that ability to do it. It's quick. It's easy. Yeah. Um, so that is a benefit of, of having smart controls. It does add some cost onto the project. Yes. One of the reasons why it's being implemented more frequently is that cost has come down quite a bit over the last three or four years. It used to be double. It used to be about $200 a fixture, and now it, you can probably do it for less than $100 a fixture. Wow. Again, we're not here to sell you gadgets and widgets. Right. Um, we're here to explain what's out there, what are the advantages. We'll sit down with you and figure out what's right for you. Um, you may want to consider smart controls only for certain areas or certain mm -hmm. streets. But right. we'll go over those choices uh, with you, uh, decide what makes sense. And my main goal in this whole process was to um, save money, save energy. Um, it helps the environment. It, um, it helps our pocketbook. Um, but it also gives better lighting to the residents when they're walking, when they're driving. You know, that, I think technology has come a long ways in such a short time um, it just seems like it's beneficial I just looking at the payback you know roughly of this if this was just a hypothetical thing if you know almost seven under seven years right you would pay back that investment of what you're doing and it just makes sense long term when you're looking at a municipality and how to take care of your residents for a long time and this is just smart business sense for sure and, be, right. and beyond the payback, because when, once you once you own those streetlights, and and once you've recovered your your initial capital uh, investment, uh, those savings just keep going. Just keep going. Yeah. And, yeah. Good. Okay. Anything else you'd like to add, or, or, or uh, I, um, I'd open it just up. Just I'm right down the road. So yeah. if you Very if you have if you great. have any other questions, if you want me to come up again, uh, I'd, let me. I'd wonder if the, does the public have any questions? Anybody want to anything they were thinking about or didn't get answered? Or yeah, come on up. Let's just state your name and you know, it'd be great. Uh, yeah, I'll read Fredmore. I live on Grave Street. Uh, I just wonder what uh, color temperature LEDs you have. So let me address color temperature. Uh, the, the American Medical Association came out with a report about a year and a half ago that had two conclusions. One was uh, they strongly advised any municipality that was looking at going LED to apply proper photometric design, which I've gone over. Mm -hmm. And secondly, they advised to reduce the Kelvin color temperature, which at the time, just a couple of years ago, um, most commonly was 4,000. They advised to take that down to 3,000 because there, um, there are um, analyses, reports that 
show um, that a certain amount of blue light exposure may have adverse effects on circadian rhythms, right? Interesting. There, and, and this has been debated back and forth. We, don't, we try not to get involved in this debate because mm -hmm. we're not here to tell anybody what's the right Kelvin color temperature. But what's happened since that report came out is most municipality, in fact, most of our clients have now gone down to the lower Kelvin color temperature. And it's not just because of potential concerns on effect of blue light on circadian rhythm, something that's a little bit debatable, but more on the aesthetics. Some people just like sort of the softer, yellower mm -hmm. look of the lower Kelvin color temperature. Okay. And what's happened, a couple of years ago, this was very rare. So if you wanted to go down to a lower Kelvin color temperature, you'd pay more money and you'd have to wait more time because the manufacturers were not producing. They've all gotten on sort of the bandwagon here. They realize that this is what the public wants. Mm -hmm. And so you don't pay any more money for it and you don't wait any more time for it because they all have inventories at all wattage levels mm -hmm. for lower, lower Kelvin color temperature. The, the, the one consideration when making this choice between four and three is, objectively, 4,000 will give you better color rendering. It's called CRI, or the color rendering index for 4,000 is higher than 3,000, except, with some exceptions, in dense fog. Huh. Dense fog, you'll get better color rendering with a lower um, Kelvin color temperature. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. I mean, so a lot of the municipalities that we work with, um, they opt for a hybrid solution. So mainly the lower Kelvin in all the residential areas, and then if they have a busy intersection or a busy street where they don't want to sacrifice any visual acuity, they stick with 4,000. Interesting. Again, our job is not to tell you which is right. Our job is to educate you on what you gain and lose going from one to the other. There's no right choices here, but most municipalities have gone down to 3,000 now. That's a great question. I had no idea that there yeah. was even a... Thank you for asking yeah. that. Yeah, I can get you a copy of the AMA report if you want great. to. Great. Yeah. Yeah, that's very helpful. Huh? Did I answer? Your oh yeah. Good. Uh, other question is about the maintenance after the system is installed. Do you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So another very very common uh, since since the utility's been doing your maintenance for you, we're not expecting you to do maintenance once uh, once you take ownership. So we have a complete maintenance program which includes uh, what we call interim maintenance, because there will be a gap of time between when you take ownership of the fixtures from Eversource and when you convert them. So that's a different type of maintenance because we're maintaining your high pressure sodium fixtures, right. which fail much more frequently than the LEDs. So you'll have maintenance for that period of time and then you'll have ongoing maintenance uh, once you convert the fixtures. You don't have to contract our services. Um, you're free to go out on your own and if you do that, we will help you put together uh, the uh, bid documents to make sure you select the uh, right kind of maintenance. Mm -hmm. We'll also furnish you with an option. We'll show you what our maintenance program looks like should you, should you contract that from us. And I assume that depends on the, how many lights you have and all that kind of thing. So I'd be curious what that kind of figure is percentage-wise. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll send you drafts of both agreements, both the um, uh, interim maintenance yep. as well as the ongoing post-conversion okay. maintenance. That'd be so great. you can have a look at that. But when you're doing the GIS audit, um, would you be able to let us know which light fixtures are actually not on so we have an idea of, of some of the ones that are already off? I, I, and, I'd and like some to be able to out. say, we, we do our, the audits during the daytime. Oh, you do. Yeah. And we, we have, a, I'm pretty sure we have a street light in the well, that has that information. What's somewhere. happened in the past is when we were, we I mean, we've been trying it. to deal with this for many times. Um, there has been lights that have been burnt out that mm -hmm. Eversource never. Never fix. They never fix. Or, <laughs> we, or we've had multiple complaints on the same yeah. light for like months at a time. Mm -hmm. So unless people report it to us, we don't really, I mean, no one's out really looking, oh, that light's out. And some of them we did turn off legitimately. So um, if we had an idea of what ones we, we could, because we're being charged on, you know, the number, mm -hmm. whether we, they're on or not. So mm -hmm. if one or two are burned out or a few are burned out, we're still paying for that electricity, even though 
we're not having the light. So that would be part of the interim maintenance would be to have, hopefully have that light fixed relatively soon, mm -hmm. you know, because we'd still be charged. Right. So I was just curious about that. We I mean, could, been, we um, could, we could do an additional night audit for you if you, if, if you wanted. Mm -hmm. um, but well, then, because I, I, I was wondering, um, I, I think I would like an, um, a night audit or be interested in it because we, we have turned off some of the street lights. We've had multiple requests over the years to turn them back on. And, and, and we, we have different size lights all over town too. So it would be nice to have you look at what is really happening here at night. And then we can have a discussion of, you know, what intersections we know and are problematic, whatever. But we, then we'd have an idea of in the neighborhoods as well, because there are mixed lights in the neighborhoods. Some of them are extremely bright, and some of them are not so bad. And some are turned off. So, so, so um, having a night audit would, uh, would identify which of those lights are, are out um, or not. From a photometric design perspective, in terms of giving you the proper lighting, it's, it's, it's completely not necessary. Hmm. It doesn't matter what kind of lights you have. We're, not, we're, not, we, we're, we, we're assuming you're not getting proper lighting, and even if you are, we're going to improve the lighting. Oh, okay. Gotcha. We, we, don't so need to, really we don't need to see the lights on. We need to gather all these data okay. points, and, and then, then we'll design you. the right lighting okay. for, for, gotcha. for, for, for... Then that's for, fine. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah that makes sense, yeah. too. Yeah, it, it, it would be spending money unnecessarily to, 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 okay. to, to do that. All right, then it's not really worth it if we replace. You look at the fixtures and then yeah. right. we'll figure it out. Okay. Any other questions from the public? Kevin? <laughs> I'm sure you have a few. Kevin Scarborough, Kevin Scarborough uh, Deerfield Highway. Um, I got a million questions, but I'm going to try and make, make the quickest, easiest ones. Um, I think this is a great project, um, especially seeing how they're giving us a roadmap as to yeah. which direction we're heading in. Um, I'll be honest with you, I'm not, I'm not a light person. So being able to go through and understand exactly where is what, do we need a light here? That's the only thing I look at. You know, do I need a, so this project I think is fantastic. I think going to LED is gonna be great because obviously we save money in the whole nine yards, carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. Some of the concerns I have is, is when we do the conversion, what the time frame conversion is going to take. Um, we presently have LEDs at the highway department and they work great when the controller works properly but I'm having issues with been multiple issues with the controllers when lightning's being struck somewhere else. It's not hitting our lightning protection system. It's actually running through the ground, goes up, and it fries my boards. And the boards are $2,600 a piece. Mm -hmm. So far since 2014, I've replaced three or four boards because of this. And we're working on trying to figure out how else to protect this. So. But again, like he said, the, the ability to be able to reduce the, uh, uh, the amount by percentage, by 10% mm -hmm. or to whack, we do the same exact thing. Um, actually, ours is actually part of a timer where up until midnight, it's, it's at 50%. And then as soon as midnight comes from midnight to 6 a.m., it drops right down to about 20, somewhere between 20 and 30%, I think is what we got it set at. So there is light there you can still see, but it's not like blinding, blinding light. Right. Um, but again, my major concern is, is what, what the maintenance is going to be in the future. I mean, right. granted, <clears throat> excuse me, we have a bucket truck that we share with the other two towns, which is fantastic. That'll get us that height, but we don't have any licensed electricians. Right. So maintenance is one of the things I'm going to be looking at in the future, yep. just for the simple fact of what it is. And I, you know, I, technology, like you said, has gone leaps and bounds in the past four years since we got ours at the highway garage. Um, and I'm sure what, what they've got now is, is much, much better. I'm always sketched about everything. I mean, I always think about what's the worst possible thing that can happen and try and plan for it. And that way we're always trying to stay ahead of the game. Um, and I, like I said, I think this is a fantastic project. Maintenance is one of my concerns. And obviously yep. I did a little bit of research on it, but you know, the paving and stuff kind of took away a lot of my time. Sure. Um, all in all, I think this is a great project. Okay. When we should move forward with it. Um, and David, I understand what you were saying about some of the contractors, but as long as we're not utilizing state money to be able to do this project, then they can't dictate to us which people we use. Well, that, the other so. question I had too was, is, is there any help from the state and, w and what kind of handcuffs does that make us, you know, give us? Or, yeah, thanks, Kevin. 
Kevin, thank so, you. So before that, I'll, I'll address, yeah. I'll address your, your um, uh, query on, on maintenance. Okay. We have, just our company, we have over 200,000 fixtures that, we, that we've converted. So we have a lot of hard data now on, on failure rates with mm -hmm. LEDs. The tier one manufacturers, they all, uh, um, uh, they all have a 10-year warranty, uh, and they all um, project a failure rate at 6% over 10 years or 0.6% per annum. Our real failure rate is roughly half that. Hmm. So here we have an instance where they're performing actually better than what the manufacturers are stipulating. The oldest, largest LED conversion in North America is Los Angeles. Roughly about the same amount of fixtures that we've done as a company. They did hmm. about 250,000 eight years ago. And their failure rate is about the same as ours, 0.4%. Oh, so great news. Um, the technology works. Um, these, these fixtures rarely fail. And if they do, uh, they come with a 10-year warranty for the photo cell as well as, as, as the fixture. And he talked about like electricity, uh, lightning or boards, and does that play into this as well, or is there something? Well, they all come with surge protectors, but you know, if you're going get to get hit by a direct bolt it, of lightning, you're done anyways. I'm not going to lie to you. You're <laughs> it's going to fry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but you, you know, you take out incremental um, uh, uh, force majeure insurance for for that sort of thing. I see. It doesn't cost very much, and you're gotcha. and you're covered for that. that. Makes sense. Okay. Kevin, isn't that covered under our 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 town insurance, that would be. Yeah, I could not tell you. Yeah, it should be. It should be if it's a lightning well, strikes. We can talk to you about insurance. Yeah. That's yeah, another yeah. common question that right. comes comes up. Great. What was your, sorry? What was your other quick question, Trevor? Oh, you the had, grants. Had, is there? Is there a grant? Is there grant money? So the, there's uh, an incentive uh, which flow which will flow through your utility, and it's and it's it's included it's in, in, the, this, in the calculations. Okay. Yeah. That, yep. That okay. Did. Good. There is, there is additional grant funding, but unfortunately, you're, you're too late for it. Um, the program came out a, a, about two years ago through the DOER, yep. and it was extended, but that's also been fully subscribed. Right. But yeah, Everybody right. wants to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. Like solar. Yeah. Um, great. Well, this has been very, very helpful. So, so what's the next step on this? How do we um, move forward? So, if you're um, if you're interested in in, in taking the next step, um, I would send you um, some draft agreements to, to look over. Mm -hmm. um, one agreement will be um, the service agreement for the project itself. Then there'll be an interim uh, maintenance agreement, and there'll be a long-term maintenance agreement. Yeah, let's look, let's look have, at all that. Have a look at, at all those. Most of the municipalities that contract us work with us on an open book basis. Um, we find that uh, it's in everybody's best interest. Everything's transparent. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to bid out the two main cost components of this project, the fixtures and the installation. Um, and then we'll agree before we start the project how much money we're going to make on it, what, what our gross right. margin percentage. It's typically in the in the twenty percent range, um, and that's yeah. You don't have to work that. We can we can put a closed bid to you, mm -hmm. and then we're beholden to that. Yeah. But I think it's in your best interest uh, uh, to work otherwise. And then we'll have to kind of see how it fits in financially for us when when we can tackle it when we can't. So um, you know how long we it provide takes financing it. as well. I do. It's it's in the uh, in the yep. proposal. We'll go through that. The, mo the most common sort of financing for these types of projects is called the TELP tax exempt lease. Um, it's a standard sort of uh, uh, asset lease, uh, uh, no capital outlay. The savings uh, exceeds what your lease payments are. Interest rates have been going down. We use the conservative 4% for our calculations, but we're seeing interest rates in the sub 3% mm -hmm. uh, range. But your best and lowest cost of financing obviously will be a bond. Right, uh, right. If you have a bond yeah. and you can roll this into your bond, then that's, uh, that's the best way to go. Yeah, so we'll kind of get together. We'll look at those proposals and then get together and talk about where I, we want to go forward and I, when. I was just going to say we should have a joint meeting with the finance committee yeah, because we might want to pay cash for this. You know, maybe energy it's committee. It's Yeah, we'll, we'll see what. There. See how we can do that. Uh, well, we've got a couple. <laughs> And then Bruce after, oh, yeah. No, that's okay. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, you're yeah, go ahead, sir. 
Hey, Hi, Pam. Uh, Pam Predmore, 36 Graves Street. I have two questions. Um, first, have we figured out which of the streets in town are still control controlled by the state? Mm -hmm. And if so, does the town have the right to replace the fixtures that are on those state? That's another excellent question. Yeah, yeah we'll look so at that's that. A, that's the first question. Yeah. Second question is, at what point can the public see the design of mm. the fixtures that are going to be used. Yep. So uh, it just as long as that's great questions. I think yeah. I think during our you know um, when you came in after you do an audit, you'd probably come up with a plan. We'd discuss what what we were thinking and certainly get public input. So um, we we call it generically uh, community outreach, mm. and, and it's part of any successful project. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll be furnishing uh, all, all all these folks with lots of information to disseminate to all of you so you'll know what's going on. We anticipate questions and provide answers. But uh, as part of that, if you want to have a public meeting mm -hmm. where folks can come in and take a look at what we're proposing, we can, we can do that as well. Great. I, I think we would have a public meeting because, you know, we want to make sure that the public is, you know, happy with the plan. Um, but we'd also want to, we would be discussing it at least a couple times with the finance committee, I would imagine. So to mm -hmm. figure out what, how we pay for this. So there will be more discussion. Good, Bruce. Good evening. Uh, Bruce Hunter, 103 Seeing Gully Road. Uh, my question is on the procurement of these type of services. Mm. Um, is there a competitive procurement required? Are there other firms that provide the service that you're asking for tonight? I'm sure there are. I, this was and the do only. We, do we have to go through a competitive process? We will find that out. I don't okay. know that for sure, Thanks. but I mean, but maybe you could answer. Do you compete? I can, yeah, I can answer. <laughs> yeah. This is like our engineering. We have choice, right? Accor according, according to Mass Massachusetts procurement law, and this is why we set up our, our contracts the way they're set up as an open book. Um, uh, uh, professional services agreement. So you you can contract our right. services as professional services, and then the you know sort of construction part of it is done uh, open open book and bidding. And bidding. Okay. Great. Yep. Great. Well, thanks for coming tonight. Thanks for having look me. forward to getting more information, and we'll, we'll move keep, forward. Move on forward this. and see okay. what we can do, and look at look at all the options. So. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks, Um, if anybody else, I mean, we had, you guys had really good questions. So if, if there's any other questions, make sure, you know, just forward it to us at the Selectman's office. So make sure that we can ask them um, in the next few weeks. And we can also, you know, get this sample kind of estimate, you know, rough, rough idea up on the web so people can look at it and have, have questions on it. So our next, um, our next scheduled appearance um, would be the uh, town building advisory committee updates um, are a request for qualifications surveying next steps and Julie Chalfont the chair of the buildings uh, advisory committee is here as well so welcome come on up thank you Julie yeah, for, coming. for coming this is, looks better than the last time Even. how are you good how are good. You? good 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 so um, I, I have not had a chance to attend any meetings. I'd just love just kind of an update of where you guys are at and, you okay. know, where you, I, I, read, I read the RFQ, so I, uh, most of it. Excellent. Pretty, pretty, pretty familiar. I have a couple, couple of questions for you, but um, just an okay. update of what, what, what you've been doing and where you're at and the public could hear what's going on. Sure. So you all gave us the charter, so I think you know what we're supposed to do, but yep. I can do a quick recap. Thanks. Um, our goal is to look at buildings that are owned by the town and make recommendations for, um, for those buildings. Yeah. Most um, specifically, the church and the senior center building, mm -hmm. um, but the also yeah. looking at all the buildings. So we've had sort of two thrusts so far. One is to come up with a an RFQ, which you have mm -hmm. the draft in front of you, for a building assessment. So that's to look at the several buildings, not just those two, mm -hmm. and give us um, an assessment of the physical condition of the buildings 
and recommended upgrades to bring them up to code for what they are currently being used for. Mm -hmm. um, this would give the Capital Planning Committee information on um, expected maintenance and upgrades that are needed and costs associated and sort of a timeline associated with that. Mm -hmm. Given that information, that gives us dollar values for bringing these buildings up to code, and that is one piece of data that will help us um, decide how to make recommendations. The other major thing that we've been talking about and are really just getting into is putting together a survey for the town, um, a survey of space needs. Mm. So. Um, Great. That's really we good. are just starting this, so we, we really don't have a cohesive survey together yet. Yeah. We've talked to, there's a professor at Western New England University who came to talk to us at our last meeting. This is what he does. Mm. He provides his services for free because it's community outreach. What the town pays for is the like postage and stuff like that. Sure. Um, <coughs> We drafted, you know, a, a bunch of questions that we gave to him, and he's he's just starting to work with us. And our goal is to come up with a survey and have that out to the town this fall in order right. to get data back. Wonderful to do that. Um, the survey, the goal of the survey is to figure out what people, what what sort of space people need, and what sort of activities. Um, are governed by those space needs. So yeah. the questions are along the lines of, um, as you do either work for the town or recreational or civic um, activities for the town, do you have the space you need to do the types of things you need to do? Is the space adequate? Mm -hmm. If you had, you know, are there other activities that you would do if you had the type of space you need? Those kinds yeah. of questions That's are great. where we're going and looking at um, this building, the church, the senior center, yeah. you know, those types of things. Great. Um, and then I guess once we have that data, like, oh, it's gonna cost this much, we decide, maybe the group decides, or we as a town decide what we wanna do. Do we wanna invest that kind of money or do, do some other plan? Is that the idea? Right, Hopefully right. So our goal is to make recommendations yep. to the town based great. on the data that we've gathered. That's great. So. That's wonderful. Yep. That's I wanted to touch base a little bit on the funding. Yeah, um, that was my main, main yeah. question. Too, so we could just. So my main question on the funding, um, you know, I, I know we have two funds to fund this, um, and I tried it last. I forget one of the special town meetings um, when we were asking for the additional thirty thousand. I was trying to group it together into one fund to be able to do this cohesive, you know. Um, evaluation, but um, my um, motion was changed on town floor and had to be specifically the money for the church had to be specifically spent that twenty five thousand only on the church, mm -hmm. and then the other thirty thousand could go to any other building. So I don't know how the RFQ is set up. Is it set up in a way that that we would only pay for that one church out of that pocket of money and not? out of the other it just got kind of confusing for me how we were going to do that and I that's kind so of what so that I'm is you, not I'm specifically delineated in the RFQ as it's written right now okay what we put in there is $40,000 for the whole RFQ which includes all the other buildings and the church okay um, the part of the RFQ it's an RFQ so we're looking at the qualifications of the people gotcha. right yep the price of the total package is not to this the intent of the way it's written um, as, as the draft is right now. So the price of the total package is not to exceed $40,000. We're gonna negotiate the scope of what's actually done with the successful qualified person, person gotcha. whatever that terminology is. Um, so it may or may not be the entire list of buildings or the entire list of tasks on so there based on that negotiation. As gotcha. part of that negotiation, the intent is that at most, so it's 30000 for any building plus 10000 for the church. Okay. So if that's the way it would be split out. And so the, the question point, for you is whether you it. want that, how you want that done. So we could ask for 
separate bids, or we could say that you know the church piece of it is not to exceed ten thousand mm -hmm. um, dollars. Yeah, that was. I it, just didn't really know how you were uh, able yeah. to do that because it got it got all kind of mixed together. Mixed together, and, right? Well, I was trying to put it all together so you could do it anywhere, but we really the town folks wanted to separate. It should be able to be done with the billing. Well, I mean, when, yeah, yeah, maybe when you get to that point, that, maybe yeah. Bruce yeah. could, we, we could answer could that. Just, I mean, if, mm. if you don't have an issue, I think, about the, I think it's in terms of if you feel it needs to be separate, like she's saying, when we actually bid it. Otherwise, I think when we allocate, if you're comfortable saying that 10000 or whatever apportioned amount is acceptable, when we get the invoices, we can bill, you know, one account and the other account. But I think the question is. I just wanted to make sure it was clear to the people doing I was the just evaluation say, yeah, you have that to. you know you're you're right. kind of pigeonholed based on that right. based on that amendment on the on the town article. So so the evaluation. I want to make sure I'm understanding what you said. The evaluation is just to pick a person who is qualified Correct. to do the job. It's not yep. negotiating the actual job, but in the process of negotiating the job, you'll be able to separate. Perfect. We should be able to separate. Yep, that's it. fine. Then. I'm good with that. I just didn't. I didn't know how that worked. That so. was the plan. So okay, that's good. And you're the aware question of it was whether I'm it needs to say that specifically in the RFQ, and we thought that since the RFQ was an RFQ, just picking a guy, yeah, or picking a, a right. firm, yeah, you're not that's, getting to the actual part yeah. yet. Okay. That's a billing thing. So yeah. Okay, that's okay. good. That's, I was just hoping that that was looked at and, and understood. Bruce, do you have to um, add something? It gives us an opportunity also um, in the advertisement <laughs> to state that. We can add additional phases of the project. Yep, I saw that. Um, yep, which allows um, you to negotiate another fee for the remaining fifteen thousand dollars for the church. Gotcha. So if you're happy with the architect mm -hmm. and the engineers, if you want to do a feasibility study, because that they use the fifteen thousand to do the feasibility study of what it might be able to be used for, yep. that's an option also. Okay, great. So we, we, we've left it wide open such that if the architect is somebody we can work with, we're happy with, yep. that we can, can move forward to the next phase. Great. Bruce, I'm thank you on that. I'm just glad you anticipated I'm, I'm that separation, so that's really perfect. really happy about that, okay. too. And then in, in the uh, thing, I saw one place there were six buildings and then seven buildings, and I wasn't sure if that was just a, a, a thing yeah, that we, allowed I, you to... I've got to go through and, and, and make sure I've gotten all I that stuff I didn't know stuff if that was just to correcting. allow to add another if you chose there was enough money or something, but okay. I it was think, just the six buildings. We, clear, you we went through buildings. this at our last meeting right. and made that we a noticed, of, we did notice, notice that, that one, too? the six okay, and good. the seven, yeah. and yeah. there's a few other thing okay. places where we... Right. We recommend I think I've changes. tried to correct someone, but I may have missed okay. a few. So yeah. I've got to go through it one last time. No, I'm time. excited that you're doing this work. I really appreciate the help on that. And, I, um, I appreciate it. I, it's a very good committee. And yeah. Thank you very much for um, so, all the work. In so, order to um, proceed then the next time, um, as Bruce said, that uh, the way the RFQ is set up, it's, to, it's basically using the dis, uh, designer law, um, designer selection law. Mm -hmm. So in order to use that, you have to accept designer selection procedures. And I'm not sure if you've done that in the town. So town council, when I'd asked them about it and they couldn't recall it, if it had been done, they had sent us a draft okay. of that. So I'll put that on your next agenda and you should adopt those as we get this Perfect. ready to go out. You're basically gonna do that process. It's all part of this process. Okay. So we'll put that Sounds on your good. next agenda and we'll have a draft of that. Um, yes, I guess. <laughs> so one of our members resigned because she's going to be gone for the oh. whole summer. Oh, okay. Um, I was sort of hoping she would come back in the fall, but we back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we haven't, and we haven't gotten, I don't think we've gotten a res An official, official resignation, resignation yet. Right. We, we so, need to okay. get that from her. So maybe by next time, but you may yeah. be searching we for may one. Need a, for one more member. member. Okay. Um, yeah. Yep. Debbie Davis. So, she, yeah. She's, she's going to be gone. Okay. She's yeah. up in Maine. Too. All right. That's yeah. fine. Well, yeah. If you, if you need somebody, just let us know. We'll, we'll okay. try to help. Thanks. Thank you, Julie. Yeah, thank you. Thank I, you I'm really you, impressed yeah. with the committee. Julie. Thank you. Perfect. Excellent. So, moving along. Um, so discussion items. The first item is the uh, FY20 hauling and disposal MOU with the Franklin County Solid Waste. Um, which this is a yearly thing we do. Um, let me get to that spot. 
Thank you. Kevin, what um, do you want to come up and just talk about the composting? How's that going? And then oh, give us a, the recommendation on this as well. And can we get a larger compost bin? Oh, is it filled up already? Oh, it fills up like by 10 a.m. <laughs> yeah, no, we can certainly increase the size. Yeah, we as, as far as the uh, composting, it's a huge hit. Yes. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I was, I was a little surprised. I thought it was going to go okay, and it's literally, I'll admit this, it's probably about seven to tenfold more than what I thought it was going to be. Yeah. So it's, it's def it was definitely a great move. Yes. I'm glad we went ahead and, and you know, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the women went ahead and put together the program and I just kind of helped foster it along. Well, um, I have to it's, say, it's worked out um, really, really well. I've had nothing but positive comments. Yeah. Usually people are complaining about something and I actually had people reach out and say how wonderful The only thing they're is. complaining about is how small the bin is. Right. And like <laughs> so I said, that's, that's, one, that's not a shape. problem. Now, now that we know that what the volume is going to be, we yeah. can increase the size. That's not yeah, that big not a deal. A, I knew that wouldn't be an issue. So. <clears throat> and to be honest with you, when it comes to uh, the pricing difference between the uh, the dumpsters, it's not that big of a difference. Right. Um, so it shouldn't be, it should be no issues whatsoever. It'll be great. I think a lot of it is the pizza boxes. They just take yeah. up a ton of space. Exactly. And, well, and it's because before, I mean, you can't, they had to go into the Food, trash. Exactly, had to go so into the trash. This is fantastic. So, Saving yeah. a lot of space in the exactly. compactor, and no, it's great. Fantastic. Um, as far as your MOU that's in front of you, uh, yep. it's basically this is standard. It's the um, it's the per per haul. I'm gonna have to bear with me because I'm gonna have to go off the top of my head. It's the per haul yep. um, costs, and then it's the per ton cost, and then it's the administrative fees that goes along with the solid waste. Um, these are all in line. Um, I believe it's a, a, a good move. Um, one of the questions I've had in the past was, well, why aren't we doing our own steel recycling? Um, I don't have a container to put it in. Yeah. And if we go ahead and just throw it on the ground, it's going to become a junkyard. Mm -hmm. We do get money off of, you know, because it's showing how much the hauls are or whatever, mm -hmm. but we profit from the steel um, surplus so that's so if somebody's looking at that saying you know why are we continually spending all this money to recycle something that we can recycle ourselves unless we want to go ahead and just put a truck there because realistically that's the only other way or i have to go out and purchase a truck that's going to start hauling um, Stuff up to or uh, like a like a lift and that's it's not cost effective you know mm -hmm. it's for for what there is um it's not it's, that big of a deal i mean because realistically it's that thing gets emptied like uh, I don't know, maybe once every couple months, you know. So it's not a deal right. like where it's the recycling or, or the trash where the stuff is being pulled out once a week or right. twice a week, depending on what it is. And there's such a fluctuation in steel price or whatever. Exactly. So you never know exactly. if it's worth it or not. Yep. Um, just, just hitting on how this plays in with our compactor. Pactor. Okay, so the compactor itself... Um, was going to be pulled out of because originally the solid waste management Jan she was really trying to get me to go ahead and move it down onto the concrete pad yeah and she's been pretty adamant about that for a couple of years and then she ended up showing up on a Thursday and I said okay just sit here for five minutes and tell me how this is going to work yeah. and after she sat there for five minutes she goes this isn't going to work right and I says and the flow you have right now is nothing compared to a Saturday oh yeah Saturdays I've seen where you, you have backups mm -hmm. literally out onto Lee Road trying to get into the transfer station. When we, when we change up the fence, we get the different gate in there, we're gonna have more, more flow being able to go in. Um, in the very beginning, I'm quite sure that we'll end up having to put up Jersey barriers because it's gonna be something new and just lines yeah. painted in the road is not gonna cut it for people. Right. Um, right. You know, so we'd have to almost give them like corrals on which directions to go to. Mm -hmm. I think the flow is gonna be better. And then obviously then once we go ahead and, and, and change out the, the dumpster, or excuse me, the compactor. The problem I have is, is timing wise, because mm -hmm. realistically I have a day right. to do this because if I do it on Monday, I can have it ready for Tuesday. You know, if I yep. do it on Wednesday, I have to make sure it's ready for Thursday. If I do it on Friday, I have to make sure it's ready for Saturday. So, so timing wise, it's very difficult unless I want to pay premium price and have it done on Sunday and Monday, right. which once again, I'm not going to do because um, it's, it's, it's cost prohibitive. Right. Um, that still needs to be accomplished and i do not have funds for but it is on our capital is to actually replace the shed and the reason why i've been holding back on the shed is because again i was being kind of pushed to put that compactor down below yeah 
Now, with all that being said, when it comes to the trash, some of the issues that we've been running into is because I've been really pushing the guys up there to make sure that these it's dumpsters full. are full before mm -hmm. they head out. Yeah. Like, again, this weekend, Saturday. this is the second time we've had a problem in, yep. in, in a couple of months. Yeah. And realistically, this is only two instances we've had in almost a, a, a fiscal year. Yeah. So it's not the way I'm looking at it is, is I'm trying to make sure these things are as full as possible before they go out. Expensive. One of the problems, you know, somebody will go, oh, my God, well, look at all the trash that's there. You know, why didn't you empty it? Well, do you want me to go ahead and, and look to see how much the haul is? Yeah, exactly. I'd now, rather now you... I just took that money and I just threw it out the window. Right. And then, you know, because you're still going to pay the same price as far as the, the tonnage is concerned. Absolutely. But I'm, I'm losing half of my haulage. Right. Um, and, and, again, you know, because we're trying to stay with the prices of, of the stickers. We're trying to stay with the prices of the, uh, the bags to try and make sure we stay sustainable. And right. But that's the theory of, of the pricing of our bags and our stickers is to make that sustainable because it's really not fair to the people that have their own private services. Why should they be paying out of their tax money mm -hmm. for services that they don't get? Right. And that's, that is why our, our costs are a little bit higher because a lot of people go, well, our bags aren't as more expensive and, and this and that. And I was like, yeah, I said, but the entire town is paying for it and not the entire town is getting the benefit of it. Right. And no, like, I think we've gotten it really. I mean, you've gotten in the I mean, last couple of years. It's it's self sufficient. I'm fairly, I'm fairly well dialed well. in now. Where if there's I, a pile of say, bags on a Saturday, we haven't had an increase. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and, and as far as increases are concerned, you know, I I think the past couple of years we've been fairly um, we've been stable. Stable, mm -hmm. yeah. and as far as actually paying for everything that's there, um, last year I think it really cost us like maybe fourteen thousand. Right. Out very, of out of efficient. whole compared to what the entire project is. Yeah. Yep. So it's, I think it's, you, I think it's a, it's a good win-win. I mean, do you have a timeline a on the fence and all that? Because I know Jan was kind of breathing down her neck on that. Um, I do not, to be honest with you. Um, cause there's a lot of things that come into play with it. You know, okay. I'm going back and forth right now with DEP because we're still trying to deal with the issues out back as far mm -hmm. as the landfill is concerned. Right. And with that being said, we'll get all that done um, first. You know, we've got the new contract. We got to, because the people that we were using before now they don't really do it anymore. Um, which kind of left, and they left me out in the lurch. You know, yes. I, you know, I reached out, and I'm like, what's going on? I haven't heard a word from anybody yeah. in a long time. So <clears throat> they finally came up and said, oh, yeah, by the way, uh, yeah, we don't do that anymore. Right. I'm like, okay, well, all the stuff that you did that I have already paid for, I want. Yeah. Which they did. They provided all the, uh, the CAD drawings right off the bat. There was no problem with there whatsoever. I went ahead and afforded it to uh, Fuss and O'Neill. Mm -hmm. They, in turn, finished off. What, or they looked at and they're giving us pricing on what it's going to take to finish that off as far as the design is concerned and the oversight of the actual work. Now, DEP has it where they are requiring engineers there to be there during work on the capped landfill because they have had a problem. Actually, it's a rule that they have, but it, they kind of lessened up a little bit once, and it was a Franklin County town. I'm not going to say who it was, but the person that went in there said, yeah, all right, cool. I'm going to do whatever I want and ran the ripping the cap, tried to hide it. Mm. Um, it was just ugly all the way around, you yeah. know, and by the time they got through trying to fix the cap, it was, it was like a $50,000 fix. Um, it was just crazy. With that being said, they are allowing me to do a little bit as far as quote unquote digging, as long as quote unquote, I'm on site when it's happening mm -hmm. in the, um, the lower area, which is quote unquote, the burn dump, which is where our existing transfer station is. That all used to be the burn dump, quote unquote. Okay. So with that being said, I'm going to try and go back with them and say, listen, you know, you give me latitude here. Can you give me a little latitude there? You know, it's, it's costing us a, a boatload of money, you know, to be able to have somebody stand there and watch me work mm -hmm. when I'm still going to do the same work. I'm, I'm not going to deviate from it. I'm not going to make a shortcut because if I make a shortcut, the only person I'm messing with is myself. Mm -hmm. um, and if I rip the cap, I, I don't want anything anywhere near ripping the cap because I don't want that cost. Right. You know, so... Unfortunately, there's other people that have made it difficult for, yep. for me, per yep. se, but I've got a little bit of latitude with them at this point in time right now. But that is why I really want to move forward with taking care of that. Yeah, it's because, got to get done. You know, we, we cut the deal with them last year. Hey, we need another construction season. They gave us the other construction season. Yep. And then we looked at it and said, oh, great, you know, we might be able to get these um, solar people if right. they go ahead and put it on there to make that part of the project. Well, I that can't count work. on that. And I told them we're going to get this, and, you know, it's on the back side of that. Uh, yep. document that I gave you is basically the, the order of saying that it will be done this construction yeah, season. So I put my name on it. I said we will do it and I want to do it. Yep. Um, oh no, I we'll agree. just move forward. So so that's where that kind of comes into play. So that's 
playing off a little bit with the fencing at the same time because we're right. trying to make sure everything it's kind fine, of flows Kevin. through. Just, the advantage I have right now is with the dumpster, or excuse me, with the compactor and the fencing is both of those are a capital expense. They can be rolled. So, so I can roll those from, from FY to FY without a problem. It's not a deal where I'm trying to go ahead and jam something in really fast. Right. Excuse me, underneath the uh, existing. Right. Mm -hmm. No, okay. I wasn't worried about that. I just, I know that Janamine had, it was on our checkoff list for the, you know, the inspection. And I. Correct. I, I didn't, you know, I don't think she'll have a huge problem with it. Because no, she's so reasonable. But I didn't want us not to get recertified because. No, there won't be an issue with that. You know, because one of the issues that they originally talked about was, is they said, well, as soon as I pull all those posts out, I, I can't put new posts back in. I'm like, well, why not? They're like. Well, because you're close to the cap. I was like, yeah, okay, well, that's close it is great for atom bombs and stuff like that. But, you know, if I'm not near the cap and I'm not going to penetrate the cap, then why can't, I, why can't I dig there? And then kind of going back and forth a little bit, they said, well, maybe we'll go ahead and maybe we'll put in um, the ballast type where you've got, just got the big ballast on the outside, nothing mm -hmm. down. I'm like, well, that's really not very cost effective for one. For two, that's really not going to work. And for three, I'm going to put it right back in the same hole that it was in before. Right. Um, realistically, if I can go ahead and re reutilize some of the posts, I'm going to. Um, some of the posts I can't. Right. Um, but again, the, the posts themselves are in decent shape. So we can maybe shave a little bit of money here and there. All right. Mm -hmm. but Thank you, Kevin. Well, so that, that's pretty much where we're at with that. Um, Anybody that hasn't noticed, uh, yesterday the uh, statue went back up mm -hmm. in Old Deerfield, yes, um, which is really cool. They did a yeah. beautiful job. Uh, the bronze unit went up. That looks fantastic. Great. Presently, right now, we are done with the milling on Old Main Street. Uh, we've done the milling from one end to the other. We had one small little incident was, wasn't too bad. We ended up uh, uh, hitting one of our sewer covers, which kind of put us into action for about three and a half hours of trying to redo the cover, try and get the dirt and stuff that went down inside. but. It was, again, it was taken care of before we had a backup somewhere. Okay. Um, but all in all, the rest of it went very smooth, I thought. Good. And timing-wise, as far as the paving, uh, I've had, it, it, it's They're changed five times place. today. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, Busy tentatively season. right now, I'm looking at, now I'm looking at um, doing Woman Hill first on the 14th, and then which is a Friday, and then Monday and Tuesday, which is the 17th and 18th, I'm looking at trying to get Old Deerfield done. And okay. again, they'll go from one end to the other. Yep. And then once they go ahead and get, take, uh, the water department takes care of the issues up there on Hillside Road, and that's gonna be the next larger project we'll, we'll get right into. Okay. And again, all of our Chapter 90 funds have already been yep. uh, appropriated for us, so we're, we're right. in really good shape. Good. Okay. So I'll take a motion to... Um, I make that motion. I'll second, second it. All those in favor? I approve. Thank Both. you. you. Guys, go with Thank me. you, Kevin. Um, yes, thank you, Kevin. Are, are you staying apprised of the um, digester issues I up in Greenfield? Are, you, are is someone going to the meetings? Because I, I haven't. I'm been not sure that there hasn't had been a meeting in a while, okay. and I think one of the problems is is, is and correct me if I'm wrong, Diana, because I think you may know a little bit more about this than I do. But the long story short, from what I understood, was originally they were trying to get multiple towns together to go ahead and pull this together. But then they found out that they weren't able to get the USDA. And then what little I did read in the newspaper, they made it sound like they were only going, they were going to have to fund it themselves. Yes. And if they were going to fund it themselves, they were only going to make it large enough for their usage. Hmm. Now, they may have been thinking about maybe going a little bit larger for expand, you know, for future. But... Again, I, I don't put that in stone because I'm not right. sure, yeah, but we'll that's the general that. information that I've had. We've got to find a local solution. Yeah, and, and the problem is, is you're talking millions of dollars. Yeah, you I know. know. It's, it's, know. it's not an easy it's, thing to do. It needs you know, to be helped It's going to get even worse with, with you know, with, uh, they've got new things coming out now because of the nitrates. I know. Um, which is, a, well, which there is coming some... up in, I think, the 21st of July or something up in Greenfield. Yes. And, um, yeah, there's one in June um, one in June, and, and Dave Prickett's going to that. Correct. He's doing some others. He's going to give us an update on yep. that stuff as well. Yeah, so we can go ahead and jump up to the one, and that way we can. Yeah, there's one. Because when we get up there we can... after Dave explains to us, you know. That'll cause, help. Because he, he, can, he can take the, I don't live and breathe that stuff. Right. And, and I'm not afraid to admit it. I mean, yep, that's and, true. And. You, you need somebody like a Dave, yeah. you know, because he's heading us in the right direction. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I do not, I, I, I personally, myself, I truly trust David 100%. You know, mm -hmm. I don't think he's trying to take us for a ride by any means. 
you know, he's definitely helped us out multiple times and he's done multiple projects, helped me through that yeah. where I've never seen an invoice for. Right. That's true. Um, and with that being said, he knows, he knows what's going on. He understands when they start talking about these different things and the BODs and what is the milliliters of the mm -hmm. this and that and of the quantum leap or whatever, you know, it gets well above my head. I'm not afraid to admit it. And then he can break it down into, oh, well, this is what this means. Oh, okay. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, he is open to update us on exactly. what those regulations are going to be coming down the road. Because exactly. um, um, Josh Schimmel sent an email to me and um, maybe some others on, on uh, you know, what the, these two new workshops that are coming up that have to do with that and um, was hoping we were going to be involved with that. So I'll, I'll try to go. Dave's going to go and then he's going to update us and then Great. maybe we can go to Greenfield together on cool. that. So. Um, so all those in favor of an aye. aye. Yeah, we're good yeah. on this. So do, is there a signature? Yes, that, that's the original I'm putting. This one here? Yes. Okay, great. Yep. Hey, the only other thing I'll give you a quick update on is the, uh, the River Road problem where I was having yes. the embankment, Love like, disappearing on me. Yep. Uh, for the most part, it's stabilized right now. Um, this is not a permanent fix by any means. As soon as the river comes back up again, yep. it's going to be a problem again. So that's something we need to start looking at in the future. And to be honest with you, this is going to be a multi-million dollar project. I know. Uh, it's going to be very similar to River Road. Yeah. Um, personally, myself, I don't think I would use the geofabric in there the way that they did it. Again, I'm not an engineer. Yeah. But I would, I would pile, I would, I would do um, sheathing. I'd drive sheathing in, mm. and that way it's it's there, it's steady. You know, you can support it as needed. But we are so close to that culvert. That's over there. I know. Which part that of that culvert like, is actually sagging down, and it's going to be a part of it is, project is when you're being done. held up by a by an eight by eight that mm -hmm. yeah, was put in at one point in time. In I have no idea when, but I can tell you it was sometime before 2010. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, we're we're having. Um, I just Kimberly and I started because our hazardous mitigation plan um, expires on July 3rd. Mm -hmm. uh, Diana, Kimberly, and I started the process today at three o'clock. So um, we set up a possible um, meeting for 11 um, a.m. on the 26th, Kevin. I'm hopefully you okay. can come. Um, we can start working on that. And then we were thinking of a joint meeting at 6 o'clock on July 10th. And so what we can do in that July 10th meeting is update our MVP program to include the River Road okay, issues and, and put those into the hazardous mitigation plan so that potentially we have the hazardous mitigation pot, the MVP pot, and I don't know, whatever. Um, the fish and wildlife guy um, is gonna meet on, uh, we have tentatively set up another creating resilient communities meeting at the end of the month. And he has three pots of money available. One of them is Whisper, and I'm not sure exactly what the acronyms are, but anyway, this Whisper program sounds like it might fit on River Road, um, so it would be worth connecting with him. His sure. name is Phil. He's a new new fish and wildlife guy. So potentially we have some pots that we can hit besides, but I still think we should still make sure we go to Mass Works on this potentially because the same argument that we used on the River Road repair by the Sunderland Bridge, we have all the story for that part of River Road as well. It's still the same. Right. So um, I see, we need to somehow start that application process okay. on that for that, and potentially we might get it because it, it will be over a million dollars. It probably will be a million two or a million three, right. based on what I looked at. Mm -hmm. Because um, you know, our problem is, is, is we've got an increased amount of truck traffic on River Road now yep. because of the that's what really of worries the me limit of the cheap side yep. bridge. Yep, that was, so. that, that's what really worries me. Because mm -hmm. um, you know, right now, I mean, I haven't done a study count, I haven't done a traffic count on that road in quite a, quite a few years. But my ballpark guess, I'm going to get it's going to be very similar to Sugarloaf Street. So you can be looking at somewhere around 7, 7,500 cars a day. Mm. You, know, you know what we could we do? Um, Can you imagine trying to take 7,500 cars a day and put them over hillside, north hillside? Mm -mm. We, should, we could ask Ryan Cleary and Maureen Mullaney up at FERCOG to do a road I've, count. I've, got, I've already got my list of the places. Okay. That, oh, you did? Okay. Okay. Yep. Um, okay. Thank cool. you very much. Very Have good. a great Thank night. You. Thanks for coming yeah. in and updating. Did you, you had a question at one point? Did you want to? Well, yeah, I have actually uh, two, two questions. Uh, one is the is the price of recycling 
uh, affecting the you know the amount of money being coming into the transfer well, station? Well, what happened is our the um, China was paying for our recycling, and then all of a sudden they stopped taking recycling. So recycling all over the United States now costs money. So we we go to the down in Springfield. So there is, um, a, you know, part, it's a dual stream. So we, we are better off than some of the other communities, but um, it's gonna, it's, you're not going to be making money anymore on it, really. It's, a, it's more of a break-even situation. Okay. I guess the other question in terms of truck traffic is uh, fairly often I see full-size tractor trailers going over the bridge at the end of North Main Street. Yeah, illegally. And I wondered if uh, a very big sign at the exit to uh, Pelican saying no left turns would be uh, in order. Yep, I know the chief is looking at it. But. Yeah, oh, I, multiple, uh, that's the way I come into town. So many times I'm behind a tractor trailer. And it's been pointed out that sometimes they come in empty, but they're certainly leaving more or less filled, I think. So I don't know. Something to add on that? Yeah, uh, as far as the bridge is concerned, I reached out to uh, to Johnny. Johnny, in turn, when a uh, chief, police chief, yep. he in turn went again and got in touch with uh, truck team. Truck team is supposed to have been sitting out there now and then. Um, when Good. we first had the when they first lowered them, I did go to and talk to their sh uh, shipping and receiving department and told them, you know, don't get caught going over the bridge. I said right. because they lowered it so low that you're not going to be able to drive anything over it. Yep. Um, but realistically, I mean, there there are people that still drive over it. There's still people that are going to, it's like speed limit sign. You know, you can put up a sign, they're still not going to do the speed limit. That's a long-term issue we got to deal with. Exactly. It really is. You know, it's, uh, it's, and having the truck trailers go over it really makes it, um, the usage, the lifespan much less. So we it's really not the have deck to. Of the, it's not the deck itself. It's the, actually, it's the abutment is where the yep. problem is. And it's I the see. north end of the abutment. So oh, every okay. time you got those tractor trailers running over there and they're hammering it, it's just pounding Shaking that abutment it. even more. Yeah. And unfortunately, at some point in time, what I'm concerned about is the next, they're not going to lower it again. They're just going to put up Jersey barriers and say, right. I'm done. Right. I know. Um, and again, we all know we're not even on the TIF for that. Not anymore. No. So that's something that we would have to recognize, and that's a further conversation we'll have yes. later on. But we need to rectify our own internal problems, and then we can go back out. Because I was basically told from DOT, oh, yeah. District 2 said, until you figure it out, we're Never not going to dump the money into it again because oh. we had 100% plans and you said no. Yeah, that was just devastating. So, um, and then as far, as far as the recycling, real quick, uh, we're still going to make a little bit of money. Um, fortunately for us, our, our, our um, dirtiness of it's, ours, and I don't want to say good. it's super low because then that way people started getting lazy and putting yeah, no, more dirty stuff, stuff out, in there. But, Ours is more than acceptable. It's probably the easiest way of saying yeah. it. Well, I mean, our, our, I'm very proud, and I want to say thank you to every member in our community. We have um, our rejection rate is very low. It's, very it's low. About, so far, it's been zero. Yeah. yeah. So, um, really we've um, when Trevor and I out. went to the MMA conference, we went to this whole big recycling thing, and it was so depressing. And um, they have this program with DEP that you can participate in, and. Um, I just was very proud that our numbers that were, I guess Jan must forward them to us. Mm -hmm. The community profile for us was very good. And it showed that we were in the higher percentage of recycling as a community. It was clean recycling. And we actually decided not to participate in this program to improve our community because it really the, the effort to make, to have us go up another extra percentage was it wasn't probably going to pan out so right. for him to, to match the effort. So, again, like Kevin says, you don't want to say too much because we want people no, to keep people doing it. No, people are doing it. a good job. But, Thank you. But the community should be very proud that our recycling is one of the better ones in the whole Commonwealth. Sure. So yep. that's thank really you. wonderful. And thank, thank you, you, Kevin, for mentioning that. Yep. So moving on, um, the next item is to appoint the town administrator screening committee members. And that's, we discussed this at last meeting, and I think we went away without taking a vote. So um, these would be. Um, I make that motion for Trevor McDaniel, John Bachorek, Brenda Hill, Skip Olmstead, Satu Zoller, and Tom Scanlon, Jr. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 
I just want to mention that. Oh, Skip, any discussion? <laughs> oh, I will. I just want to mention Skip was an addition. Yes, yeah, Skip wasn't yeah. discussed Skip last was time, it. so I didn't want you to think yep. I just added that. No, no, words. thank you. <laughs> yep, yeah, we talked about that. And, um, the next item on the list is uh, banner attachment license with Eversource, and um, I had just seen this. I know that I think this is just to I'm kind of discuss. I'm nervous about that. This I would was, rather have someone look at I that. I think Deerfield Academy, if I understand this right, was looking to add some banners to uh, the yeah, light they, poles correct they from they have some from up april there uh, excuse me from august to december 2019 they would like to put some their d director of development had approached us and asked if they could put banners on those poles mm -hmm. and in order to do that they have to have a license agreement with eversource or the town does so they're asking us to carry out this license agreement on their behalf so that they can put those decorative banners on those utility poles and they've identified what poles they are here in the and, my agreement. only question was just in reading this in consideration of such permission the town hereby releases discharges and uh, to the extent permitted by law will defend and hold harmless the company from all action suits claims damages losses costs and liability whatsoever that the company may hereafter incur or suffer when sound when whether sounding in tort or otherwise um, and that arise out of or result from any actions related to affixing maintenance presence or removal of such banners from uh, by the town I or on its I behalf. Just, I, I just, just want to have our legal look, look is at Is it worth having just, Lisa, just We look can over have a look at it. I, I'm fairly certain that uh, they're or? going to, well, I, we had an issue with them while Kip was here about a, about a deed. We went back and forth and they were pretty adamant about not signing any documents that they are not you know, generating. Right. Um, and since it was pretty straightforward, I just brought it forward. But we certainly can send yeah, it to legal and have her take a look at it. I'm but sure it's fine. I'm, I, sure. And I want, love no, it to is have a lot, this. a lot. And we there, have a little bit of time. And right. so if okay. we could just have their look at it, that real quick. Sure. And we can bring it back for next week. Yep. That'd be great. Or next meeting. Um, I may have already even sent it, but I'll double check. Okay. I mean, I, I don't, I didn't get it back from her, but I may have sent it when I got it. I just didn't. Yeah. Put it back. Thank you. And next, uh, next item would be the annual appointments, and these would be appointments to boards. Um, right. So I just want to I want to frame this. Yeah, we didn't, please. This isn't all the appointments. These Correct. are the appointments that we um, are, have, you know, fairly consistent, um, and and these are our. Uh, uh, our police and public safety folks. So we mm -hmm. wanted to get those back on the books. Your yep. uh, EMS director and your police chief have both, both, both asked for those appointments to be made so that they can start preparing payroll and whatnot for the coming Correct. year. The other board and committee appointments um, except for we did present Council on Aging because I would like to get going on Council on Aging. Mm -hmm. So I just want to have a discussion about that and look at those appointments. Um, but all the other boards and committees we intended to bring in the next meeting. Um, we did provide you, just for your benefit, and I'm, I'm going to have Pat put this on the website, but um, the all of our list of uh, folks and then our vacancies. Um, we've had several folks approach us about uh, interest on boards and committees, um, so we do want to get information about their uh, about what we have open um, and available. So we'll put something on the website in the next couple weeks, but we'll put the appointments on for June 19th, and between now and then, we will um, contact the uh, incumbents to see to mm -hmm. ascertain their interest in being reappointed. Right. But in the meantime, if there's other folks that are interested, we would like to encourage other folks to um, apply. Yes. Um. I didn't know if you wanted to mention any specific vacancies, but we did want to just give you that. Yeah, we could, I could go through those pretty quick. Um, <clears throat> so, and then on the appointments, can, do we have to do the Council on Aging tonight? Or I just let didn't me, really get a chance just, to go over this list. I'd like to do that. Sure. Let me, let me can I just yep. talk to you a little bit about it? So, sure. So Pat had presented it as the term expires in 2020, but I just took a look very quickly at the bylaw, and I want to reiterate what the bylaw does say so you're clear on, on the language. It actually says in your bylaw for Council on Aging, the appointees shall hold office until successors are designated. Right. Um, so there isn't clarity on there being a term of office. Right. Um, I think we should, that's something we should discuss and clarify when we take another run at the bylaws, because mm -hmm. um, the other thing it says in your council 
Council on Aging Bylaws, the chairman of the council is appointed by the select board. Generally, you let your councils, you know, appoint their own leadership. Mm -hmm. um, so that's unusual. It also says that you have three to 15 members. So there's, it almost right. seemed like originally it was almost meant to be kind of like an Everybody's ad hoc. Included. And, yeah. you know, we really need to have a, a council on aging that is, is you know, is, has terms and that is, that right. is, you know, that we have some consistency and stability and, um, so I'd like to, you know, address those things through the bylaw at some point, but I did want to tell you what your parameters are for now. These folks were the folks that had been sitting in 2009 when you last had a Council on Aging meeting. Yeah. And the people, Carolyn had asked me who I had confirmed with, and so in all honesty, we've only confirmed with Carolyn, John Pachurik Sr., Mark Gilmore, Nancy Pachurik. Um, we know that Lewis, uh, CA um, was on the committee and he's moved. Um, the three uh, people we haven't, or excuse me, the four people I don't think we have confirmed is Heidi, Elsie, Marsha, and Wallace. Mm. So I'll make sure that we do that before next meeting and in the meantime you can, you know, you can review yeah, those. How about we, appoint, discuss, uh, well, we, could have, we could appoint the four that have been confirmed. If can you we, I would like to wait just one okay. week, uh, one okay. cycle to just Kind of think about that. Sure. Um, if we can. Sure. That'd I just I wanted to give you the information. Okay, that's good. Um, everything else? Do you want to go ahead and? Yeah, I, I think we should do the public safety because it always yeah, makes me yep. nervous um, in case something happens. We don't we don't want to um, have yep. anything lapse in case right. from a liability point of view. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so I would make a motion for Lori McComb, um, director of EM, uh, EMD. John Pachork, uh Jr. as assistant director, and Zach Smith, um, also assistant director for EMD. Um, I guess I could just do nine, emergency 911 coordinator, Derek Melnick, and uh, Bill Swayze. Fence viewer, Albert Olmsted. We could do him, I guess. For, Force Warren, wardens. These are like sort of the fire people too. Kevin Scarborough, um, Bill Swayze, and Darren Melnick. Mm -hmm. Um, you want to? I'll make a motion to appoint them. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, bear with me one sec. And then. Uh, Louis, please. These are six, five. Yeah. And then, uh, do you, do you want to do the public wares, or do you? Oh, I guess we could. Yeah, if, might as well. Uh, Dave, you want to go ahead? The second page, I think it is. What's that? The public wares. Yeah. Oh. yeah, we could just knock that out, I guess. Yep. The um, annual appointment for Sean Bab Babineau, mm -hmm. Miles Downey, Corey Hamilton, uh, Ryan Palakis. Pachalis. Pachalis. Okay. Uh, Ryan Price, Zach Smith, Leo, Ch 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 mm -hmm. uh, Robert Green, Todd Jarvis, Janine Savoy. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Six, five, one. I make a motion to um, appoint Joanne Kearney to the Upper Pioneer Valley Veterans District. Second. She she did you could did confirm with her, Diane. I'm sorry. The, you, uh, you confirm Joanne. with Joanne Carney. On the I can't veterans? answer that question. I don't know if we have confirmed with her, Carolyn. I I relied on Pat to do that. I don't know for certain if she did. Um, I would imagine what, she uh, yeah. typically has. I, been. She's been wicked good about going to the meetings. She's, 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 she goes, very she's been participating. We presume she yeah, wants very, to. Yeah, very continue. dedicated. Yeah. So unless we hear I know anything she goes otherwise, to all the she meetings because I get. Um, you know, right, here through the grapevine updates and yeah, stuff. So. Yeah, she's very dedicated to that. Mm -hmm. so. uh, I know she's participating. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. And then um, do we want, well, why don't we do the South County EMS as well? And yeah, and the police officers. Yeah, we'll do the police after. after. Do you want me to read these? Sure. So uh, this is South County EMTs. Um, and some of these are full-time, some are, are per diem. Um, so the full-time are uh, 
Timothy uh, Drumgool, uh, Teresa Emerson, April Fernandez, Ali uh, Kuzmal, Anthony Muzinski, uh, Gary Ponce, Zachary Smith, Alicia Tora, and David Zamoyski. And then for per diem, we have James Bardis, Zachary uh, Bastioni, uh, Sue Ellen Bellows, Abigail Candy, Eric Drumgoal, uh, Carly Eaton, Hannah uh, Esteen, Enstein, um, Eric Fitzgerald, Richard Gallo, Mason Jenkins, Louise Kelly, William Kimball, Adam Martin, Lori McComb, Calvin uh, McKemmy, Yvonne uh, Moreno, Nair uh, uh, Ragosa, and Mark Tremblay, and Jonathan uh, Vantland. And that would be that. I second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, you know, we have a veteran's grave officer here. I guess I'll make a motion for John Sis as the veteran's yeah. grave officer. I know he absolutely certainly does that. Yes, he does. Yep. So I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, and then we're going to do the police. Yeah. Let's get that done. I know I have that somewhere. Maybe. I have, I have one right here. Oh, there it is. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, John Pachorik, Jr.'s Chief, Harry Ruddick, Sergeant, Brian Ravis, Sergeant, Adam Sokolowski, Detective, Sergeant, Mark Pachowski, Officer, Jennifer Bartek, Sergeant, Tyler Hurst, Hurston, Hurston. Uh, Officer, Jacob Ugin, Officer Mariska Smith, um, and Timothy Bolin. Make a motion to appoint them. Second. Motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Special officers Deborah Austin, matron, um, Robert Warger, uh, Joe Michkowski, Gary Sibilia, Jesse Rosnick, Chad Risley, Mark Wilkins, um, Nicholas Feld. And it keeps going um, on the back. More? Yep. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Um, Connor Perel, uh, Robert Trash, Thrasher, Thrasher um, Mark Jackus, Matthew Wozniak, Nicholas Limoges, uh, Nathan Walker, Brendan Bryant, Dave Gendron, and Robert, I mean, Rabin um, Ber Berniski. That's auxiliary officer. Yep. Um, I make a motion we appoint them. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Special appointees, um, Kathy Belanger, Louise Kelly, Ken Olette, James Savine, and um, Donald Bates. Um, I wonder why we don't have the Sunderland chief on here. We Sometime. typically do. Yeah. Well. Yeah, I'm not sure. We could check in. Yeah. Post them if you need. I make that motion and just make a note to check with John because we usually. Um, we have the Sunderland chief yeah, as well. Yeah, we have sort of like a understanding. Yeah, yep. Um, and crossing guards, Diane Baronis and Henrietta Colcott. Second, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, well, that's great. So I'll just, you know, I just want to talk. Um, so I'll go over the, uh, there's some vacancies that will, you know, it's really important if people would, um, Give to their town, come help. Uh, many boards need help. This town does not run by itself, although we do have town administrators and a clerk and all, but the majority of what happens in a town is the people. And, um, and we can't do it without, you know, just giving of some time, one meeting a month, you know, every other month, just, you know, getting involved where you can. Um, I'll just list some of the, um, you know, boards that are that have vacancies and that are available. So the, the 350th anniversary committee has three vacancies available. Um, there's a couple alternates available for the um, Agricultural Commission. Um, bylaw Review uh, Advisory Committee, there is all, uh, looks like all 
<laughs> vacant at this time. We, we, Maybe it, I don't um, know. Well, Go what ahead. happened is we we're putting this on hold until Barbara's project is done. That's right. Okay. So, so if you're interested after the project's done, please. Yeah. Um, there are, uh, you know, every year there's a vacancy and, and people appoint the uh, capital improvement planning committee. So the select board, there's a rep from the select board and then um, ex officio non-voting and then uh, the town moderator will appoint people and then the school committee will have somebody to finance planning board, board of assessors. Um, but those, uh, those are options. So um, community pr uh, preservation committee again will be appointed by different boards uh, but please get involved if you're interested in um, town and moderator you know appoints one so um, we appoint one yep and uh, looks like that's good uh, so fence fence viewers if you're on the fence on this uh, there's a there's an opening for uh, <laughs> uh, uh, for yeah. one of the fence viewers that skip on the fence huh? yep skip <laughs> on the fence um, I think Let's see, finance, I think it's gonna be good this year. I'm not positive, but Franklin County, um, Franklin Regional Council of Governments rep. Um, so I'm not sure who, if we designate who gets on that or not. I, anybody know? Um, well, usually it's a select board member. Mm -hmm. There's and, two spots. And I so. don't know why there's two spots, because mm -hmm. only, only one is a voting. I see, yep, so we'll look into that. Um, um, it's usually the chair, but mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to. I need another meeting. I know. Um, historical Commission. Uh, there is a vacancy um, on the Historical Commission and the Open Space Committee. There's also a, um, a vacancy. Uh, personnel Board, there is a whole bunch of vacancies. Um, so we would love to fill those. Um, again, the Sewer Study Committee, it's all vacant at the moment as we uh, get ready to constitute putting all that back together and get working on these items. Um, swim program committee, it looks like there's one vacancy in town memorial forest committee. Who knew? Uh, uh, well, the selectmen <laughs> have usually filled that. Apparently but. we'll fill that again. <laughs> um, Tritown Beach Commission, uh, there's, there's a vacancy there. Um, two people, Judy Bardwell and um, Bethany Foley, um, work hard on that, and, but there is a spot for somebody <coughs> else. Um, and the Zoning Board of Appeals, there has been a resignation, so there's a vacancy uh, there as well. So that's just uh, some of the fun activities you could all join up for. So we'd love to have your help and participation. So. Great. So what is the process? Oh, oh. send in a little letter. Just, Saying what yeah. you're interested in. Yeah, let us know what yeah, you're interested and in. Yeah, anything that you're send interested in. The, I know. To, to um, our office. Yeah. Um, I know you had said you were interested in the finance committee before. With capital oh, capital improvement. Yep. Okay. Yep. So, and some um, of those are appointed by the moderator, and so you know, so we could at least send split. the name out that these yeah. people are. Uh, you would send it to the select board, and I think we could pass that information on. Yep. Because two are appointed by the moderator, and then there's a, also a, a non couple non voting ones. Um, usually we have so. Mm -hmm. um, that would be great. Yeah. Yeah, and anybody else out there would like to serve, it would be great. Um, so, next item. Let's see. Let me get to me. So, hand up on this on building commissioner appointment. And I think we're at a little bit of a standstill on this. I was hoping to do this tonight. Last week, uh, last meeting, I was um, hoping that this could, um, we discussed our difficulty getting um, an applicant that we were hoping for into the spot based on the uh, based on the compensation schedule and steps and grades um, where we're at what we have we have budgeted enough money I think to hire this person we um, were hoping the personnel board would look at that option but there was miscommunication on what um, we, we were asking for and we were asking for help and um, regrading regrading and I, I think that just didn't happen so um, I'm not really sure where to go from here. I think what, what's gonna happen is that I'm gonna so. call an emergency meeting, uh, you know, a meeting outside their normal uh, schedule so I could attend and um, plead our case for where we're at and what, what advice we'd like from them or help from them or what, where we think we'd like to go and get some buy-in and, um, you know, feedback from them on where we're at. Are you, are you just talking about the allocation of the position, though, in terms when you're saying feedback and buy-in and yeah, not well, sure Yeah, well, I you're... think, you know, generally the planning board um, 
personnel board. Uh, excuse me. I always do that because they start with a P. So um, the personnel board typically would um, advise and consent, recommend these kind of positions. Um, you know, we would come to them and say, we're having this trouble. Um, we're hoping to regrade this. Usually a personnel board would look at compensations of other towns and understand, like, here's where you're at. Um, these are the, the problems you're having. Uh, we see them in other communities. We, and then they would hear evidence from us, from, in this case, the building commissioner, why we think this position needs to be regraded. Um, w w you know, the, the task that they're doing now versus what was five years ago or 10 years ago and how we'd like that job um, set on the schedule, uh, you know, based on the needs of the job itself and then also how difficult it has been to find somebody um, to fill that position. So I'm hoping that they would understand and kind of give a blessing on that or give feedback on why they think no, it shouldn't, um, just so we could have a discussion on that position and then we'd obviously make the decision, but I think the whole idea is to have a personnel and board weigh in on those decisions. And um, just didn't happen last Monday and was hoping to have another chance to, to have that discussion um, before all the vacancies happen at the end of the month. Because if we wait another month, we got to then find all new people to. Put um, on the board, Bruce, so. wasn't the discussion the consensus that no one had a problem with the building inspectors? There was, there was no, no discussion, discussion, right? Yeah, there was no discussion. I think there was miscommunication, <sighs> and so the discussion didn't happen. So then it just didn't happen. I mean, so we need to have that happen. So I think we'll call a meeting and hopefully in the next week or two we can get that going and then okay. get the person, you know, moving, right? Well, or unless you have a different I mean, plan, uh, right? we are in desperate straits. Yes, we and are. I, I just went through the minutes mm -hmm. and back in March we were supposed to <laughs> appoint the per or one, we had one of two can we had two candidates and we were supposed to pass. So this has been going on for a uh, months. And I just... It didn't I, go through the right channel. Right, but back in March. ultimately, well, I think we're, we're stuck. We I need know. to have somebody. The money was, we went to town meeting, and the money was appropriated. So, mm -hmm. yes, do I want to go through the process? I, I agree we should go through the process. But the problem is we are in a situation where we can't keep not appointing someone. Mm -hmm. um, I think, to be fair, I think last... Um, in March and up until recently, we had had ads out and we're trying to get people and, and uh, the, we, we have learned in those months that the position, we can't fill it with the, with the grade and step that it's at now. So we you know, should have kind of realized this a little sooner and got it to the personnel board and, um, and that's what I was hoping to happen on Monday night and it didn't. So um, I'm hoping if we can do it again this week or next week early, we could then appoint, um, unless you want to bite. I don't think we should bypass that process. This Well, I think we need to go through the process, but I also feel like we don't have a choice. So I, um, I, I well, I, 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 feel, I feel like we need to go forward with the appointment. Well, we don't have, a, we, we can't okay. really appoint when we don't have a, uh, an ability to set, you know, the, the salary. I mean, we have a process for doing that, and so, you know, we, we can't really. Um, but we know what, what we were asking for. We were we asking do. for the next grade and the, and the step that gives it. We appropriated the amount for the grade and the step. So mm -hmm. I, I, my recommendation or my, I would make the motion that we um, approve the, the 60 it comes to 64,500, right? Uh, it, I don't, I, 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 I think what? it depends on what you're talking right. about. <laughs> I, th I think we really need to go through the personnel board and get this discussed well, right. there. If we can, if we can do it for next week, yeah. I mean, Bruce, do you have a, yeah, you have a hand I, up? You know, I apologize for the confusion. Yeah, I, was, I guess uh, I thought Bruce you would have voted to. Road, personnel board member appointed by the finance committee. Um, the, Inspectors Department's payroll budget um, set the new commissioner's salary 
at $67,776. I'm not sure whether the salary is the issue or the step and grade is the issue. Step and grade. Step and grade, because so the money's the already been. Grade, are you trying to match the step and grade with the amount appropriated? Uh, I think a little bit in between that. We, I think, I think we, you at, are at the 65? step. No. It, yeah, the the step We're in grade at that. step five at the grade five in the early steps at those you know up to step three or whatever Was we could. Step seven approved. It doesn't matter the person if the person doesn't have seven years of experience. We can't give them a step seven. That's not the reason I you approve number of where they fall within the step level. That's absolutely how you do it. It's, no. it's based on no, the No, I don't agree with that, Diana. Thank isn't you. it? No. Oh, what is, how is it based on it's then? Based what are on the the it's based right. on the isn't experience. Right. Isn't it years of experience? No. 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 You can oh, do the same thing experience? and knock your head against the door for the same the, uh, experiences, for the, what, what the okay. person's qualifications, yeah. certifications, right. and experience for the job level. Okay, the, so it's not per, it's not year to year. Okay, no. well, but still, it has to have. They have to have some experience on the job to be able to get more than a grade one. They would have to have had some experience. Well, I just wanted That's to have that conversation with the personnel board to just say, look, this is what we're running into. Um, I, we would I, like, you know, the, here's where we're at. Normally, our bylaw says you start somebody on the grade and the right. thing. We think this needs to be regraded. This is the evidence why. Would like the building commissioner, you know, he was offered to come and just discuss the, how the job has changed and what we'd like to do, and and then the market conditions. This is kind of where we're at. We'd like to be able to uh, put them at a step, you know, a grade to grade six and a step here to be able to, you know, rightfully offer the person right. a, a pay rate that will get them here um, and 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 perform good quality work. So, I just I will do that. It's, expeditiously as I can yeah. uh, but I mean I'm just worried about just going ahead and appointing without running it through that right process I just want to I just want to have that opportunity there okay. you go. my suggestion is see if we can get the emergency meeting scheduled mm -hmm. um, get the dialogue yep and you know if, if there is a issue where they may not want to get together mm -hmm. Uh, we'll have to move forward on it I, on next Wednesday's meeting. I agree with that. I just think we should give it an opportunity. Yep. It's it's fine as long as we can. Yeah. I, I just we're don't close. I think we've got a fish or cut bait next Wednesday. I agree with that. I agree. Thank with that. you, David. So as long as we have that opportunity, we'll, we'll and, do that. And I realize we the sensitivity with the personnel board because you know it should be, you know. And, you know, we ran into the problems when I was on before, is some things happened that did not go through the personnel ward that should have. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yep. it's an essential committee mm -hmm. um, to help us make sure we're on the right footing on things. Yep. And, it's, uh, and it's just other viewpoints that are besides just this committee. Mm -hmm. So it's yep. essential. Yep, I agree with that. Um, we don't have a select board meeting until the 19th, but we do have one tomorrow have that we could add, I mean, next week that we next could add. Next Wednesday, add we could add it to the agenda. Well, yeah, we can. I, I actually had, um, so you have a joint meeting, and I did want to add an, an item that would be an executive session okay. for you, um, because we need to just do the final review of the um, uh, collective bargaining agreement. It's gonna be gotcha. uh, done, and I'll be sending it to the union. And okay. I, I want you guys to look at it. Is that a problem the same because time. it hadn't been done? We're not oh no, gonna, no, no, you already voted on it. It's just the integrated agreement. It's fine. Okay. The integrated agreement has been produced now, so it's just going to need to be reviewed by both sides and then signed. So maybe so. when we come out of that executive session, we could have a, you know, a, a mm -hmm. discussion based on whatever meeting happens, you know, before then. Hopefully, we could okay. get. Okay. Okay. If, right. if they're willing to come together and meet, I mm -hmm. would really love their input. So. Okay. So June. Okay. Twelfth. Yep. After. June twelfth. And that meeting's at five, right? Uh, the joint meeting with the planning board. Six. So that's six, I believe. Six. Yeah, yeah, that was five. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to start your meeting early? Did you have to oh. come earlier? Uh, I'm at, I'm in teacher negotiations. Oh, okay. But um, Sorry. we're hoping it's going to be fairly quick. We just I don't know. But I could I could 
maybe get out a little early and get get over here if you guys you know especially if you have to scoot off you have to work so maybe we could do it you know uh, five thirty or something like that okay all right so I'd we're gonna do five thirty next that, Wednesday know. yep okay to start and then we could go into executive session after that do it beforehand yeah. mm -hmm. okay. okay so I'll yep. have to it's posted right now so we'll have to go up and revise it but okay we'll do that. Okay, so um, any new business? I don't, um, I'm trying to think of items. We've covered a lot of that. Um, I don't have any. Um, at town administrator's report, do you have any updates you wanted to hit on? Uh, well, I just wanted to, yeah, I wanted to touch base on the, um, uh, just all the, all everything, all the grants that we've been working on this year, I think are pretty much closed down now. The Green Communities Grant has been um, finalized. We've got the last requisition and we're doing the final reports. Can I have to um, ask a question on that sure. one specific grant? Um, do, how does that funding come in? Do we set up a, I was just talking with Brenda today and I didn't see it on the, you know, list of funds and I wasn't sure, like, does it come in, the money come in later? Like, we spend our money first, and then we create it's an account? Yeah. yeah. No, then, um, so it's, it we actually got an allotment of $41,000 already, and then That's we have to... That's I did see that amount. Right, so then we have to spend, to get the next allotment oh. of 80-something thousand, gotcha. we have to have spent that plus, plus. and we hadn't, because okay. we only had two projects. We had a $25,000 right. lighting project and a boiler project that's 130000 So yep. we just, the, the lighting project's done and been sent off to green communities yep. invoiced um, but th we couldn't get an additional allotment until we got spent past the 40 so gotcha, now gotcha. we just got the first the uh, 80 we're at excuse me 90 percent or 95 percent completed on the boiler project we've got the the requisition number one is on this warrant okay. for next week yep. and we'll be sent to green communities Perfect. then we'll get the money but all the Great. money it has to be closed out by the end of june so we'll okay get our i saw money. the i saw the fund but i didn't see um I wasn't aware that because I saw the 41 and I knew I yeah. said, well, it's got to be bigger than that. But I didn't realize yeah. how that no, worked. No, it's 100 so. and the total is going to be 130, yep. I believe. Okay, great. 132. That's awesome. Um, we finished the, we also, you remember we had the, uh, we had a community compact grant that we had from a few years ago. We used that to upgrade um, our cabling and did some mm -hmm. cybersecurity. Then we had $10,000 left over once we closed it out. Um, the, uh, the folks at the Community Compact let us keep that money and we invested it into uh, upgrading our domain name network. So now um, we in, in the town hall, um, we have a domain net network so anybody can get onto a computer in town hall and, and log in and not, if your computer goes down, you're not stuck. You can use any other computer and it's all password protected, which right. adds additional security. And we're yep. still, that's still um, in the final, we've, we've implemented it, we're just um, putting the final touches on that. In the process of doing that, we did have to upgrade some computers. We did have a plan for that. We put it in this year's, some of it was in this year's budget and next year's budget. Um, we ended up having to upgrade one sooner than we thought that we put in next year's budget, mm -hmm. but we're moving money from uh, our budget to, right. to cover that, and Brenda said there's plenty. And, and we talked about yeah, yeah a couple it's of not, minutes. Yeah, yep. it's not very much. It's a you know, couple thousand, couple thousand dollars. It's not a lot of money to buy. But we did have to, as I said, we had we were going to plan to upgrade three computers. We had to upgrade four this year, but next year we'll have less, presumably. Right. So, yeah. Um, complete streets, we're having our... Um, I uploaded the, the um, policy. I have not heard of the scoring yet, but they have received it. It's in the portal. Um, the, we are having our kickoff meeting for our internal stakeholders um, on Monday, uh, June 10th at 9 a.m. Um, the folks that have been invited to that are all the public safety officials, including I did invite um, the crossing guard, uh, Sharon Pacheric, because she had some mm -hmm. issues at one point she had come to us about. Mm -hmm. um, we, had, we invited Brian Ravish as the school resource officer. We thought, I think he might have some input. The fire chiefs, um, the police chief, public works, um, and uh, I invited Lisa White. I invited Council on Aging folks, some yeah. folks from the senior, okay. Christina, and yeah, some folks from, from the seniors. Um, and then, uh, of course, you guys know. I wonder if, if um, our, our town common committee might want to. Yeah, if that, yes, that would be come. wonderful. Anybody, if you can thank Kate, I can. Yes, um, Kate, Pam. Kate was here earlier. I wish we'd 
we thought of it. I but know. yeah, so I'll, anybody you can think of, I mean, I want to, you know, we don't want to have this initial day, group be too working, unwieldy because no, this will kind of be, but I do want it to off. be, yeah, yeah we're going to do a, a kickoff meeting here and just sort of go through what the prioritization planning process will look like. And then we're going to do a site walk, a, a brief site walk to look at and some then, of the highlights of the I areas. It'd be nice if one meeting was after work so people yes. could come. Like Absolutely. The public could then yeah. weigh in on this stuff. We'll so. have we'll definitely have public outreach and community yep. meetings, but this is just to get the plan right. process get going. Get started. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Great. Um, the MVP grant, as you know, has been submitted, and Carolyn and I have been working on. Now we just submitted. We just uh, allowed them to use the match. I don't know if you're going to talk about that, but still part of our climate resiliency. It's all going really well. There's going to be um, on January on June 20th. The planning board's going to have a working group meeting to talk about the green infrastructure um, bylaws that have been um, presented through our MVP. Uh, uh, what date was activities. that? Activities, uh, June 20th, June and 20th. that's going to be at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. It's 4 to 6 p.m., and we're inviting, um, of course, it, I think the planning board's going to post it as a meeting, and it's going to be, it's not a public hearing per se, but we definitely want to get feedback from the public on these green development standards and green development infrastructure and mm -hmm. what the, you know, if there's any, um, you know, the support or any concerns, you know, any feedback. Okay. Um, I just wanted to mention just for the for constituents that do reach out to me, I get a lot of constituent concerns on a regular basis and I am I do I do respond to people, but I am researching many concerns. Um, this week alone, um, we had somebody that hit a pothole. Um, we have some licensing issues around town, permitting issues. Mm -hmm. I've had drainage issues brought to me. I've had some traffic control issues, um, some speed issues. Um, mm -hmm. So all of those things, we try to research Mass General Law, figure out what the protocol is to solve the issue, and then you know work on solving the issue. So I just want to let you know the folks at home know we're, we're not we 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 have here your issues and if you haven't heard back from me some of you have but um, we are you know trying to work toward that <laughs> so trying to get some staff to help <laughs> yeah um, I think that's pretty much it I'm waiting on several documents from town count uh, from town council review I've tried to include Trevor in many of them so he knows that you know some of these things too that you've asked about or have questions about you know, we are waiting for some feedback or mm -hmm. the, some of these things I've raised, I've already, you know, I'm working with town council and trying to get some information or some solutions to present, you know, yeah. when I when I give you the information. Um, and then I think lastly, I just wanted to mention thank you for supporting uh, my participation last week in the Resilient mm. Leadership Conference. Yeah, it was so. really exciting. I, I, I presented, I get, I printed a packet, but mostly I thought what was really interesting is it really aligns with the things that Deerfield has been talking about in terms of resilient resiliency mm -hmm. and how being a resilient leader is focusing on a lot of those same kinds of issues, like figuring out what the purpose of the organization is, focus on what needs to be done on the outcomes and results, and right. um, you know, but also investing in people and teams. And I found it really interesting that they talked a lot about that people are not interested in coming into younger people aren't is interested in coming into public service anymore. And I think that. Um, you know, it's really notable con considering what's going on sort of in politics these days. Mm -hmm. It's gotten a lot more difficult to get the younger people engaged. So um, hopefully as we continue through this hiring and the personnel stuff, mm -hmm. um, we're mm -hmm. able mm -hmm. to, um, you know, be uh, more nimble and attract attractive as a, a mm -hmm. community for, for staffing and um, yep. so. And Great. I just I do want to apologize for the confusion around the personnel board and my you know my role in that. Thank you. Um, I um, couldn't be there Monday. I should have been more clear initially about that. And um, I did. I guess when I presented it to them, I did. I when I looked at when I wrote the letter and wrote the lang looked at the language. I sort of did think that you did had voted that, but understanding they needed to review it as well. So mm -hmm. if I miss interpreted how it was presented. I apologize thank for you. that as well. So yeah. thank you. I think, um, is there any public comment? Is anybody? Yes, oh. please. Oh, oh, did you have some stuff yeah. too? I just oh, wanted, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I just wanted to say that um, we had the second day um, that Franklin Conservation District had um, provided the Rivers and Road workshop today. We had 
over 40 participants. It was greatly attended and it was so interesting. Um, and this is, uh, we did the corridor mapping last month and now this is the rivers and roads and it was basically how to upgrade and recognize how to, to, to replace culverts and how to handle rivers. And um, it was, like I said, it was well attended and it was very worthwhile and hopefully it benefited our department as well. So that was very good. Um, I did want to follow up to Shelburne Control. I had an oversight meeting today as well at 1 o'clock, and it looks like um, we'll have confirmation in a couple weeks as a real timeline on switching over to the 800 system. So that will definitely save us money, and then we'll know about the radios as well. So that potentially could free up some money for something else since we had voted that. Um, mm -hmm. And that was about 45000 I think. So. Okay. So it, it will have a significant impact in the long run on us. Um, we're, um, so at 3 o'clock, I had um, went forward with the hazardous mitigation um, meeting. Just um, Diana st stopped in and um, Kimberly and I, because Kimberly was at this workshop anyway. So when the workshop ended at 3 o'clock, we went in and started our hazardous mitigation uh, meeting. Because it's a, you know, it's a process. This is the third five-year plan that um, Kimberly and I worked on, so it's not like it's new, really new stuff. Um, but I'm really nervous because we are applying for a hazardous mitigation um, grant in August, and our current policy, um, our plan, um, plan expires on July 3rd. So we need to move on this. So um, Kimberly had outlined a timeline that had us pretty much approved by January 2020. Well, that's not gonna work. So anyway, we went over the timeline. We've agreed um, to do some extra work, or I've agreed to do some extra work with her. Um, so we're setting up a team meeting on um, 11 o'clock on June 6, 26. So hopefully our public safety people and mm -hmm. EMDs and everybody can come. But we're sending out the homework which is to review what the current situation is on our, you know, the, our action plan and what we have already identified as vulnerabilities and problems. And then what we're gonna do is update that action plan, and this would be from 2014. So everybody should have some responses. Um, obviously, we have as a town have done the MVP program. We're, addressing floodplain updates and all that kind of stuff. So I'll compile as much as I can remember. We've you know, been working with the Conservation District, obviously, to do all this promotion and education on river corridor mapping, um, the roads and, and uh, rivers seminars. So there's a lot of stuff that we can add in, which will be very good. Um, so that part's done. Um, and then, so then we're going to have a public meeting tentatively scheduled for July 10th at 6 o'clock. And what that will be is um, the joint, we have to do our MVP public meeting anyway. And so what we were thinking of doing was merging the, the MVP meeting and the hazardous mitigation public meeting because why well, have two nights? You're talking about same people. Same people. Yeah. in the middle of the summer. So we're hoping that we'll get an, op you know, we'll have it on our website. We're hoping people will be interested. Um, we've certainly identified North Main Street as potential problems under the MVP that will come up under the hazardous mitigation. So anyone that want, is concerned about flooding along the Bloody Brook will hopefully show up. Mm -hmm. um, that. We got, I'll make sure that Kathy Williams from Richardson's Candy Kitchen and you know, the um, houses along Wapping Road that they show up. Um, so it's kind of the same groups that we've mm -hmm. identified under the MVP. So hopefully both of them will come. We'll, pick, we'll be able to check off the public participation in both of those programs. And so therefore, we're looking hopefully to, um, if, if Kimberly and I can move forward on a couple of there's there's a five four, five or six part thing that we were working on. If we can move it forward, we can hopefully get it to MEMA maybe by mid August. But she's going to send an email to MEMA and find out 
what the potential problems would be with FEMA if we have an expired program where we actually apply for the hazardous mitigation. Mm. But, and, and she'll show us the, she'll give the new timeline and maybe there might be a gap of two or three weeks. But I, I said I was really nervous, I was freaking out. And so that was why I said, Kimberly, we're gonna meet after this meeting because you're gonna be here today. So um, we moved it forward and she, she didn't realize that it was July 3rd mm -hmm. that it actually expires. But Is I had a one my- one year program? No, when, it's a when, five year program. But I remember- when did we, st we started five years ago? Uh, no, it, the I hazardous mitigation is a five-year um, plan, and this would be this is the third third plan that I've worked on, or the fourth one actually, because I was uh, was a planning board person before. Oh, I didn't realize one. it was that. I thought it was a, a newer program. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, this is yep. this is one of those I get things the you MVs. check. Agents. No, the MVP uh, I know. is it's brand all new. The we were the first certified and just under the, the MVP, and that's a brand new program. Right. But Have they don't want us to use that as a culvert replacement pr program. The problem is that is the best program out there. It's about 75% replacement right. um, for the cost. So that's why we have to do all this extra mm -hmm. stuff, which we want to do anyway. Yeah. Have but. It's, we have to, we have to do other things so that it doesn't look like we're just doing culverts. Mm -hmm. But in truth, we're not just doing culverts, and that will come out in the hazardous mitigation because we list all the stuff that we are doing. It's just culverts are just reoccurring I know. nightmares, it's and they're just and they're worse. just and they're you know I mean it's hard to replace a culvert for less than a couple hundred thousand. So. Mm -hmm. You know, you're always and that's hustling. half of what we get for. I know, and that for and it's half chapter ninety, right? Yeah. And it's it's just you know it's an overwhelming hustle for money all the time, yeah. but um, the meeting was really good today, the Rivers and Road because we did we did have some really interesting people, a good cross section of people, and one of the persons that came as an observer was this fish and wildlife person, and he offered up a lot mm -hmm. of new information on some programs, this new whisper pot of money okay. I, again I can't remember what the uh, it's wildlife habitat I don't know whatever but anyway it, it, it is a really good program for culvert replacement and um, enhancement of habitat which is well, along the Deerfield River is perfect mm -hmm. and I, so I talked to him about Stillwater um, bridge area and how we have a potential, you know, we have some grant money from the conservation district to deal with, you know, bringing stakeholders together. So he was really interested because that would be a match to mm -hmm. his program. So potentially we could come up with some real good improvements and, and, and protect our road because um, the road, if you drive by slow, you can see the road is caving into the mm -hmm. river there. So. We've got to do something in the next probably. Well, you don't want to say a couple of years. One it's, storm. It's a one storm <laughs> kind one of storm different. Away. Yeah. So yeah. we okay. got to figure out that. So that was right. it. Was a really exciting day. We got a lot done today. Good. Thanks a lot for happened. all that work. And, it's a long day um, for you. Yeah. Long work. Long yes. Work. It's been already 13 hours. Yes. But, um, well, we'll finish this up quick. Yeah. Then well, that's go good. Home. But I just wanted to say there's a lot going on. So yes. if we look at if we Go down to our upcoming meetings. Well, the meetings are, uh, we've got to add June 10th in there because we have our yep. planning yep. board meeting June 10th. Oh, you have, your, you have a board of I'm health meeting June 10th. There's too many meetings and yeah. this meeting's Before gone on too long. That, can so, I, yes, I, I, I'm please, sorry, there's one sure. thing I need to just readdress with you. I'm sorry. I had we'll get to you, Pam. The, the <laughs> planet, uh, through, the, through, the, through my town administrator updates, yep. the planet aid agreement, I had, I had sent that to council to be reviewed before. Um, I think, you, I don't know if you'd suggest it, but I sent it. And um, I got it back and what, um, so there was a few things that they wanted to be changed in the agreement. Um, this is what the FERCOC? 
Uh, this is the Planet no, Aid, planet. the bins. This was oh, for the bins, oh, yeah. So the attached aid. license, I had sent it off to be yep. before we signed it. Um, and so they had added, what was added by council was the requirements that to keep the area clean and that they're responsible for the disposal of any random non-clothing items that are inevitably going to be dumped there, yes. is what council's experience has been. Yep. Um, they said that we couldn't agree to the exclusivity because it's a money-making venture, so we would run right. into procurement issues. Okay. Um, we can't prohibit anybody from placing bins in these places other pla yeah. other folks um, and they changed the term to three years it's it was on an auto renewal okay but yep. what was brought up what I did want to mention to you is that um, Sarah Bellino who's the contracts um, person you know reviewed it and she also mentioned she does think that the um, the bin at the senior center would normally be in a community characterized as a commercial retail venture and so it would be a prohibited by your zoning um, at the senior center, your zoning hmm. there is C. It's a CVRD. Um, because they make money on. Oh, because they pay us a couple pennies on that. Because it's a commercial. Yeah, because they're making huh. money. Because it's a commercial retail, you know, That's venture. And this is why we send it to council. And she said, she said similarly, the landfill is in the RA, which also prohibits that commercial retail use. But she thinks it's more reasonable to allow the bin at the landfill as an accessory to the municipal use because it allows for the town to further its recycling goals. Right. Right. So I wanted to pass so. that information on to you. My goal is to try to do things correctly yeah, yeah, in, me too. in compliance with our, mm -hmm. with our zoning. <laughs> zoning and laws and bylaws. So then so we could so we could allow it at the at the trans at the transfer station yeah, and not downtown. Right. She's okay. suggesting you it, it, the the the, the, tr the transfer station, you could make a case that it's an auxiliary to the recycling use. It and does it make a case more, for that, right. for sure. And then people have the choice. It's a, and they could still a, see it. I mean, they'd still have it. Well, and available. also then you don't have the issues with um, dumping stuff. The dumping and stuff in the center and stuff. So, right the it's much so I guess I just wanted to relay that information to you. I would gonna go back and tell Amy, the representative, okay. that as well. That makes um, sense. But based on council's That's review, good. I'd like to go with what council That's said. why we so. have council. All right, thank you. Thank you. you. Um, I'll just hit one thing real quick oh. after <laughs> Pam. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Pam Pradmore, 36 Grave Street. Um, I'm not sure how, or if I'm doing the right thing, who to, to ask for and help for this, but um, I've mentioned in participating on the, on the town, ad hoc town common committee, that there has been an issue at, at Park Street, Park, Park Street, mm -hmm. um, which is And Graves, way, Park and, and Grave. The inter and the intersection with Grave Street, which is where I live. Mm -hmm. um, and I mentioned once before that as luckily my husband is a very good driver and so he came to a complete stop and before pulling out um, in front of Park Street, he looked both ways because a truck came the wrong way down Park Street. Now oh, that geez. happened a couple Ooh. of years ago. Luckily, he didn't T-bone us. Wow. Had my husband not looked, you know, I probably would have been killed. Yeah. So that was a couple of years ago. Last week, a similar thing happened. Hmm. In this case, we weren't trying to go across the intersection. We wanted to go up Park Street, right. and we came face to face with a car. Wow, going the wow. wrong way. And uh, going the wrong way. And again, had we been going faster, or had there not been space right. for each of us to pull around, um, we would have we would have been hit, you know, head yeah. on. Wow. I, I don't know what to do with that. Mm. Um, my husband thought perhaps that the person a couple of days ago may have been coming from South Main to North Main, realized that they, and we're guessing about this, uh, realized that they had meant to turn onto Sugarloaf Street. Yeah. And so instead came through, and that's why they went down Park Street. They pulled out of that business there. Uh, there's, you know, there's a car detailing. I wonder if they pulled out and just took a left or something like it's that. It's possible, yeah. but there, there is a sign if you're coming down. There is. Do not enter down uh, North Main or coming out from that mm -hmm. business. There is a sign that's visible that says that you know that's one way. Don't come in. Here. Right. I'm not sure that there is one where people potentially 
could, could pull, turn right there in yeah. front of Cheslick's. I, and, uh, so I don't, I don't know, but yeah. it, okay. it was really kind of scary. Yeah. Um, and, and I just, I don't want to see a kid, a bicyclist, or anybody in a car mm -hmm. hit there. don't want to see anyone. Oh, yeah. no. so, yeah, and I don't know what to do with that. It's a dangerous area, for sure. Yeah. And your concerns are very valid, and that's the reason that became a one-way street, yeah. because it used to be two-way. Um, back in the early 70s, mm -hmm. um, because actually that was part of 116 at one time. Right. But, um, and then the town determined that it was a hazard because of the intersection there, and, um, and they made the street one way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So okay. I, don't, I don't know what can be done to make it that a little safer, but well, we'll, it's you know not. What, what, um, we'll yeah. what we can do is, usually well, what we do is for the... Right. Um, safety issues we you know we pass it on to the police department mm -hmm. so that John can think about it mm -hmm. and um, but maybe John can we can do that obviously we would want his input but maybe we when we're doing the complete yeah, street that we can bring I mean, that up with a comment. true um, traffic engineer yeah, certainly you know, to that, look at that. that area is all, like, you know, a top priority to look at. I mean, we've already done, when we did our um, initial meeting with the engineer, we walked that whole, and we did a whole walkability um, right. with the seniors. Remember and, that. Yeah, and we, that area is of critical um, It's importance. a perfect spot for so. a park. Yeah. You know, it's called Park Street. Exactly. So. Yeah, exactly. Just, just we, over nice the years, walkway. we've, we've yes. made, uh, you know, there was a lot of discussion of closing that down. Yes, you know, I still want to discuss make, that. You know, make the common larger. Yeah, and, um, we've got great plans that drawn yeah. up. Yeah, looks beautiful. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Stay tuned. I, stay I, tuned. Definitely stay yeah. tuned. And we continue um, to discuss it in the ad hoc time. Yeah, yeah. We do. It's dangerous yeah. all the no, time. But thank you for yeah. sharing Would your story. Would you like Balance. to? Was Pam like to participate in those complete streets? I mean, you yes. just said oh, somebody yeah, from absolutely. that. Oh yeah, absolutely. The complete streets. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. so we were just saying we would love to have participate. So one of we're having the complete streets. We're having in sort of the the. I wouldn't say a steering committee, but kind of like the internal stakeholder committee of the public safety folks, the administration, um, the cross, you know, people from this elementary school, um, people that are, you know, committed to walkability and things um, are going to be at this meeting. And Trevor had wanted somebody from the town common committee. So if you're interested, um, we'd love to have, it's uh, going to be Monday, it's this coming Monday at 9 a.m. here. And then it's going to be a short meeting in the morning, and then we're going to do some site visits. So even if you could come for part of the time, if you just wanted to check in, we'd love to love to have you. So, that'd be great. That'd be Thank great. You. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for I bringing that forward, because yeah. you know what? Um, when we hear these things, it's really important because then that helps us try to figure out what we're going to do. You know, yeah. have some kind of idea. Yeah, if you don't know what's happening, right? Right. It's hard. I know. It's an issue there. that needs to even be discussed. Right. right. Lastly. Oh, two more things, real quick. Um, I'm so happy to hear you talking about our culverts, since mm -hmm. there's one in front of my house. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> part of my property. Yes. Uh, our property. And the second is, um, I want to thank the three of you for the amount of time and effort and energy that you put into this town. It thank just you. blows my mind. You know, mm. the amount of time. I usually don't put in 13 hours. I hope not. This is an uh, unusual very day. To, yeah. to all of you for, for doing that. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank, very you. Nice to hear Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you so it. Um, my only last thing, uh, I just, I was pulling into town today and I saw they're working on the um, base of Sugarloaf there, cleaning up brush and all that stuff. And I said, oh, people. So I stopped and I pulled in. I said, any <laughs> chance... We could level out this parking lot because you could lose your car. If you have a mini Subaru, it's gone. Like, it's, it's like you can barely see over the windows. Um, the potholes are so deep. So, um, and I've been talking with Kevin years ago, a couple of years ago on this because people have asked, like, hey, can we level this out? So, found out the issue, found out they're planning to pave it, but the problem is Eversource owns a part of the parking lot. So, they're working um, with trying to get Eversource to give them an easement or um, pass the land over to them. But the problem is, the problem is uh, there's stuff buried there, so they don't, DCR really doesn't want to take over the land, they just want an easement so they could then pave it. But, so we're working on that, and I said that I would work as much as I can through this office to help 
push Eversource. You know, we, we, we helped them, we told them we needed some help, so maybe they can help kind of, I don't know how that works, but if they could push Trevor, this along to the no right person. no more person. poll hearings until <laughs> yeah, right. you, get those, you turn that paperwork over. can't do over. that, but, but I, but oh I think. I um, should check with the assessors, because I don't know if Eversource actually does own that. Okay, maybe they just have a right away or something? I think like they that. have There's the easement. A, they have the easement. They've been talking about this, because uh, this, uh, so I called, I got a name of Sam, who's working there, runs the park, and then he gave me the name of uh, Jennifer uh, uh, Soper um, from Northampton, and she goes to Boston a lot, and she's been working on this for a long time. I know, And can't I know get Jennifer. it through. So um, she was grateful to get the phone call, and I said, well, let's work together, we'll try to find a way to do this. But yeah, she's been finding some resistance there, so maybe we can help um, that's all it takes. That. Yeah, that's just a little takes. bit of people talking um, and mm -hmm. see if we can get some one help. Of the other, one, of the, one of the things we want to do is run through the Department of Public Utilities. If we don't get cooperation from them, mm -hmm. we make a complaint to the DPU. Yeah. Well, hopefully they'll just go, oh, you know, we well, understand and we'll keep moving this I'm forward. I'm another, optimistic. <laughs> I'm not going to have another hearing until they get that. Uh -huh. so. <laughs> I don't know about that, but we... Uh, <laughs> We uh, would love their participation and help on this, but it's exciting news. I, I, I mean, because I know I think everybody that parks there is like, I'm going to lose my exhaust in this place. So it would be nice to have that nice and leveled out and paved. And, but, and they want to do it. And I, DOT said, let's do this, but they can't until they get the easement somehow. So yeah, that's that's where we can come in. Yes, yeah. so we, yeah, because we can fix us. The line coming down through there mm -hmm. is the highest voltage line. Eversource has coming into this town. Is that right? He's because that, that was uh, upgraded to uh, supply deer fuel plastics. Oh, okay. Across the way there and uh, where Atlantic Atlanta. Furniture is now yep. on yep. 10 Greenfield. Okay. Because at the time, deer fuel plastics was the second largest energy user in the county. Wow. With all those plants running, yeah, yeah. all that machinery. Yeah. Wow. So that'd be great if we could, yeah, that's probably why they have stuff underground and whatever there, but we mm -hmm. could um, try and move that along a little bit. It'd be great. I would, yeah, because yeah. yeah. paving certainly would be, have less impact on whatever is underground. Yeah, I mean, you know, people would have this, you know, a nice place to park and, you know, people use that constantly. And, you know, know. They, would, they said, then DCS, DCR said, then we'd plow it in the winter. You know, right now they can't because it's just, ugh. But they would plow it, they would maintain it, they would, you know, pave it. So that would be really nice. I think it's been forever. It's, it's mm. a mess like that. So Good. So that's good news. Thank you, Trevor. Yeah. Mm. So that was we'll really a that timely moves. thing. Yeah. Just for a point of interest, they'd never lose a Subaru there. They <laughs> might lose a Mini, but they'd never lose a Subaru in there. <laughs> and they'd be able to climb back out. <laughs> yep. All -wheel, symmetrical all-wheel drive. They'll climb out of anything. <laughs> So any, uh, anything else, any other business? I just, I, can yep. we just go through the meetings just real quick, sure, the upcoming sure. meetings? So, yep. so June 10th, don't forget, that's Monday night. You have yes. a Board of Health meeting. Yes, we and what do. time and that is, is that? Be, well, what that's time? What I, five o'clock. We schedule it at five? Okay, so five. Um, there are, Pat, I think Pat posted the agenda just based on what had been discussed at our meeting last time. So there's only a few things a on there. But if you, you know, I, I, I think I would like to revise it if there's, you know, let's, Think my, about that. Yeah, There's my additional things that thoughts need to... were I would like to, uh, I mean, I think there was a few items on there that we wanted to hit as for, for yeah. our Board of Health. We had tobacco regulations, tattoo regulations, yep. and the ticket, the, you know, revisiting the idea of doing some kind of ticketing yep. where that might occur. Right. So mm -hmm. we, we talked a little bit about that. I think if we could, um, I, I would love to have a meeting once a month or once every other month, just specifically on Board of Health and then really kind of decide where we want to move in the future with the Board of Health. And um, there's been talk of the Hill Town, we've talked of FERCOG, staying at where we are, just getting, you know, getting more in depth on that, mm -hmm. seeing where we're going, what we want to do. So do you so. want me to put just general, like, yeah, Board of Health organization of board of health. Yeah, or discussion? All right, I'll put some more general. Yeah, just so we have some other stuff to talk about. Don't, don't forget June 25th is a MAPCO meeting. We yes, should, I've got that in my calendar, June yes, 25th. Okay. But that oh, but should, we need to post it. We have to right, post it because we're all going to oh, June 25th. Yep, uh, at uh, Greenfield Country Club. Um, then on June 12th, we, as you just discussed, you have a joint meeting with the planning board, which you mentioned if we can, um, we're going to revise to 
start that earlier okay, if the emergency yep. meeting occurs with personnel before that we yes. can add that onto the agenda yep. um, and then on june 19th is your regular scheduled meeting uh, june 24th i do want to mention is the special election yes um so on june 19th i guess i wanted to talk just touch on that really quick did you want to do any public outreach yes. what, is, what is your public well, outreach my, idea uh, my thoughts were to educate the public again um, I'm hoping to have a little more information on the sewer not that they're tied together because people can decide to do what they want on a, on a ballot vote but I just want people to have an understanding of kind of where we are in the process of doing the sewer work um, we should have some information by then more information by then so I've been talking with David Prickett about doing a, um, an informational night again um, it doesn't okay. have to be too long, but no, you know, right. I would really, I so. think another a half an hour, 45 minutes, mm -hmm. so people can answer. If they have questions, they can come and ask questions, and or at least they can listen to Dave. And I think the 19th would be probably the night to the do it. The best time. Yeah, yeah. because I, agree. The, okay. I think, is Perfect. it valid on a Monday? Monday. Yeah, that's okay. Wednesday, that's, and then the following yeah, Monday. Yeah, so is that makes election. sense, so people can yeah. get some information and feel. All right, so I'll talk to David that about that, and we'll mm -hmm. get something set up. And then you did have some. Um, some information back from, uh, from council, council about the on, fact sheets. Like fact sheets. So yeah. we need to kind of. Well, yeah, basically what we stuff. were advised is that we have to accept a section of Mass General Law in order for you to do that. And then if you do accept the section, which you haven't, you'd have right. to do that in the future. So you can't do them now. But if you do them, there are requirements for having the a proponent and un, an opponent and both a, respond. So you have to right. have kind of like equal responses and you have yep. to identify who the proponents and opponents are and you know there's just criteria there's a lot of criteria it's not as easy as we thought that we could just give them information especially anytime you're going to use res town resources if you just you can an say election. anything you want you know so you can have certainly have public information sessions but you can't anytime you put you know distribute material with the ballot with the town using right. the town resources right then you have to do it in a certain yeah, but way. we can have the discussion at a meeting and yeah. talk about where mm -hmm. we're at, where exactly. we're going, that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Yes, uh, of course. And people can bring their pros and cons and discuss mm -hmm. it out in the open. So yep. the one thing we can do, though, is on the frontier question, right? That mm -hmm. can be written so that the town, they understand that the project is, I don't know, 1.8 million, but Deerfield share is a certain amount, right? You can put the fact that that amount that we're going to ask to be debt excluded is 700 I think that's thousand. something that we would talk about on the 19th. I think that we should put that on the 19th as well and it we should inform people of that. I don't know. I don't know if this uh, yes, I think we can The question basically has to say. just well the question all a debt exclusion question and the questions have already been drafted and prepared, I presume. I've been I don't know if they've been sent to the printer, but but council had already done them and reviewed them. The question can only um, it doesn't have an amount, and it does say oh, okay, Deerfield's portion That's of, what I wanted. The, of the uh, right. frontier. It does say that, but it just doesn't have what the amount is. But because we, can, just, inf we instruct can inform people, people yes, on the 19th because we, yes. we want them to understand they're not paying for the whole right. project, yes. just their portion. Right. But that's but that language in the in the in the question does say Deerfield's share of the okay good of the bond. All right. Too bad we couldn't say school choice has to pay twenty percent of it. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're Can good. Make a motion to adjourn. Second it. Second. All those in favor? Aye.